it's time to have the experiences. <sighs> okay. So I did see sort of a uh, spoilery, it wasn't spo not spoilery, a non-spoilery tweet from someone who said, maybe this is the last time we see them all gathered together. Yeah, not spoilery at all. I don't know why I said that. It's obviously not spoilery, but it's a good question. Like, here we go. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Hope it's not the last time. They're all here. Gang's all here. Hey, Alfie. So are we going to Charlene? Zeppelin, do you have some time to talk? Yes. Yeah. I would like to gather everyone in Dawn's respite and together assess the situation in which we find ourselves. Okay. So you're, the situation is that your dad is a dick. Pretty sure that's the situation. Let us take stock of the facts, shall we? The crisis at hand began with the sudden appearance of ominous towers in a multitude of locations throughout the world. Yeah. We've since learned that said structures were brought into being by an organization known as the Telophoroi. Yeah. The Telophoroi's stated purpose is to recreate the final days of Eon's past, an apocalyptic event that would result in the destruction of all we hold dear. Already have these towers of theirs been the cause of untold suffering. Yeah, we got people like running out of them saying glory be to Garlemald and like, yeah. Countless innocents kidnapped and imprisoned, their faith perverted for primal summonings. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Unless we find a way to deal with the corruptive aura surrounding the spires, we can't even get close enough to rescue anyone. Those shielded with the blessing of light seem able to resist being tempered at least. Well, it's because I'm already tempered. <laughs> but okay. But after what happened to our involved in Ferdola, we need to be very, very careful about how we proceed. Just let me go in there, by myself, I'm good. Hey, while these threats close to home are of paramount concern, we mustn't lose sight of the situation in Garlemald. As you know, the Telophoroi are under the leadership of Fan Daniel and one other delightful fellow, Xenos Bay Galvis, the ground prince and our dear friend. And none of me. To date, he's, recla he's reclaimed his old body murdered Emperor Varus, and plunged Garlemald into an even deeper pit of chaos. The capital is probably seen the worst of it. For a good while there, it saw the bloodiest fighting in the War of Succession, but that since changed, and in troubling ways. Aye. During our reconnaissance, the air was not once rent by the barking of cannons or the cries of discord. "'Twas an eerie fog of silence which did blanket that ruined city." That's what I noticed, too, in my reconnaissance at the media tour. It was eerily silent and empty, yeah. <laughs> the inhabitants appeared to have been tempered, and with nary a word spoken did they labor to transform the palace into a soaring edifice, born of nightmares. Right, I forgot about that. They were all like silently, like worker drones building some kind of horrifying structure. If they were indeed made thralls, it seems safe to assume that these events too were orchestrated by the Telophoroi. Well, yeah. Who else? An army of primals is awful enough, but in light of recent developments, I fear it only the prelude to an even greater catastrophe. A catastrophe? You shot? No, I'm sorry. That was rude. <laughs> we, need, we need to devise a means to counter this threat, and quickly, before our allies are overwhelmed. <clears throat> we'll find a way in Charlian. I'm sure of it. Master Forshanol. Comments regarding the final days were curious to say the least. The forum knows more than it's letting on. I don't remember exactly what he said about that. 
Sorry to end around. We just received word from Mistress Kyle. She says arrangements for your visit have been finalized. Let's go! <laughs> You'd have had to lose Lomenza and board the next ship bound for Charlian! Yay! Get on arrival, present yourselves as associates of the students of Baldesion. Come to assist with the Order's restoration. But I'm not a student of Baldesion to. to <laughs> he, did, he did the thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop it. The arrangements may be settled, but what of your thoughts? They must race at the prospect of returning home after so long. I am eager to see it, of course. Of course. <clears throat> We should set off at once. I know what he's worried about. Are you embarrassed that we're gonna look at your room? Your house? Okay. Ba ba ba, high pipe boat. Let's get on the high boat. <laughs> I'll accompany you to the docks. You need at least one person there to weave and cry, to wave and cry and wish you a safe journey. Of course, yes. Well, isn't, isn't Merle Whip gonna be out there waving at me like, like before? Like, like the first time? For old times? Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> A lot of people here. Everyone's here, <laughs> clearly. Which is good, because I've already paid for your passage. And the fee is non-refundable. The ship for Charlene should be pulling into port soon, so please follow me and have your luggage close at hand. Well, I had to throw out all my belts. There wasn't enough space in my luggage. We've almost finished loading our cargo. We okay. shall be ready to depart right on schedule. Or so I'm told. On schedule? It's a British thing, I think. Excellent. Tis nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Moon. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. Isn't that every ship? And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. Tis upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Hmm. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louis Soir of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, really? Now that's a tale I'd like to hear. Oh my gosh. You robbed Louis Soir? Will this be your first visit to Charlian, Sir Estinian? <laughs> I mean, he's pretty rich, right? Like, he, he could afford it. For, Sir afford to lose a little bit. <laughs> <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy. 
since we are now colleagues in an official sense. Oh my gosh, this is so uncomfortable. Like, Alfie, he wants Estinian to like him so much. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. Oh my god. Man, be nice to him, dude. Or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. Little Lord! <laughs> You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. Oh, man. Oh, man. He pulled a little <laughs> sun on this guy. Better. Little Lord. That's great, man. <laughs> Are you all right, Tataru? Oh, you my God. positively distraught. Oh, God. He has such a nice voice. It's so nice to hear it. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. What's your problem? Are you gonna make this about it's you? Just, we're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hellsbent on destroying the world. Oh, okay. Are you being negative, Nancy? <laughs> and once again, I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. She is making it about her, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no sense worrying about the things we're powerless to change. Well, that's hardly comforting. <laughs> Be as a leaf in the river, Tataru. Ah, oh, good. You're still here. Hori! Kultine! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation. So we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Oh my god. <sighs> they better be safe, because I feel like these are characters that could. They don't have any plot armor, I'll put it that way. Nora, are you all right? What's, what are you doing? Oh, she's just chewing on her bone and, and hecking over there. Okay, she's fine. Nora! For me and the others, wish you hey, all a safe don't journey. don't inhale I it. promise that they'll look after things here until you return. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, there's wish you a safe journey. Okay. We will too, of course. Aye, we, your fellow scions of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. Okay, he sounds confident. That's good. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian. <laughs> it's time. Let's go. It's time. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I just said. That's what I just said. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Gambate, kudasai. Gambate. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful. Okay. We, I won't, but okay. There better not be, like, a Kraken or something that attacks the ship on the way there. Okay, we, we've done that already. I, why do I feel like that's going to happen? Maybe not. And so you venture forth unto the unknown. Oh! <laughs> A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end.
treasure every moment, every step of your descent. Oh my god. Of course I'm hearing his voice in my head. And there, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. Whew. What's... that chills. In the depths? Interesting how it went underwater for that line. What are they trying... what's that? What does it mean? <laughs> oh, there's a dragon that's gonna attack us, right? Before we get there, is that? Oh, okay. You can't, <laughs> one does not simply use a boat in a cutscene. Barely dawned, my fellow early riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh, hey, we're the only ones awake. <laughs> okay. Called out to you, you say. Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. Well, I have, I mean, I can hear better. Like, my ears In are off. In case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. Okay. Um, are you trying to get rid of me? He... Must have been drooling in my sleep or something. can trust your words no longer. You have visited the first. You have every right to say that. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am, what Eidolon has always been, a primal. Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world, and I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now, those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered.
The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. does that mean? There is Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Oh, I think she meant that I can't, like, float out around her crystal form because she's not strong enough to do that anymore. I think that's what that means. In your... But, like, she's done some really, really questionable stuff. And so I really, I'm glad they gave me the option to say, like, I can't trust anything you're saying now. Like, I really appreciated that. An intertwining of your time and mine. Uh, why? <laughs> Wheels shudder and turn. Conflict looms. Monumental, which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time. Another age. Couldn't you and Zodiac have, like, worked it out? Like, did you really need to literally shatter the whole world? Like, was that the only course of action? Like, can we talk about that? Cast your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever. Fine. <laughs> so said she'll honor the promise made in ages past. Like, do you mean to bind Zodiac? Mm. Stretch -o. Oh, what a fine morning. Oh, oh, still a bit stiff, though. And a good morning to you, too. Wait. Taking a look at the island already? Wait, wait. Were we sleeping on the... Then let's go. Like, by let's the Let's go. Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. Did anyone have a bed? What kind of a boat did Tataru buy for us? I woke up, leaned against the wall. Ah, she could have paid a little extra? <laughs> what is this? I was say like my back hurt. There she is. <laughs> Good old shot. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, I see it. <laughs> nice, nice. Home. <laughs> Home at last. Well, maybe not in father's eyes, but we'll manage on our own if we must. Home is where the heart is. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? Oh man. 
Indeed. Tis as Sir Astinian said. Forget not what that he the really says. boarded this ship at your side. I pray thee. We're your family now. Astinian's like, I'm your dad now. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. Okay. Well, yeah. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. We better. They better tell us. We'll make them tell us. They're gonna wish we didn't show up. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so hyped right now. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Charlian, the solitary island nation of the northern seas. Mm -hmm. Where under Anna. the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. <laughs> Once they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Galian boots set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. Who thought was that? <sighs> so averse to the prosecution of war, Jesus. these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. They didn't like war. Yeah, weird. <laughs> what a concept. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Um, Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. There probably is Hasn't some Charlie paperwork. Hasn't but severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. Um... We are... bodyguards? Tis true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. Oh my God, I need a visa? What, why didn't we, you, you got the visa for me, right? May. Oh no. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. Tataru, the this immigration is her job. officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. <laughs> Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Don't people know, like, who we are, like, what we look like and stuff? Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Okay, so we're gonna lie on our visa applications. This is smart. Smart first step. Gratia, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? <laughs> of course. The immigration offices were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Okay. 
<clears throat> He's gonna help us get in. Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Vrahat here of the students of Baldassian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Um... Okay, so that's not a direct lie. This is pretty clever so far. Okay, she didn't like that. Very good. She I did? have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. Okay, okay. She's so just going through the motions. Okay, she gets off at like 20 minutes. So. <laughs> and it seems Looks some fine. few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Okay. Ishtola rule. Oh, how are her nails? The nails look good. Where's the salon here? See how it glows. That list is etherically linked with a citizen registry kept in the main repository. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a computer. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. What about me? Now, who do we have here? <laughs> don't act like you don't know. I guess they don't. It's been to so long. They wouldn't. She wouldn't know that. Oh, just Alpha wait. Leve, uh... Oh, just wait. Who is in my squad here? And Alize Levier. Oh yeah. These are VIPs that I'm with here today. Why don't you check your records for that? Your applications have also been approved. <laughs> Having said that... Doesn't ring a bell? The streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's uh, lord disowned his young progeny. Uh, 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 but... Uh, I thought y'all were famous here! I thought you were like celebs! What's this? They hate you? And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. <sighs> Times are quite troubled enough already. <sighs> oh, I'm in trouble. I don't have any reason to be here. We shall keep that in mind. They live here and she's they got problems. Go These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Okay, so they did they did submit the application. Hello. Um. <clears throat> Name and occupation? Um Sepla Moon. I am a reaper of souls. <laughs> I harvest souls of my victims to sit to feed my personal void scent <laughs> um <laughs> maybe that won't work uh Zeppelin moon champion of Eorzea. And it is a title well earned, I can assure you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> An adventurer by trade is what your documentation indicates. No mention of this particular title. Self-appointed, I take it. You haven't heard of me? Either way, your employer seems willing to vouch for your character, <laughs> so I shall, albeit reluctantly, grant you entry. <laughs> Champion. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, please call me champion for now. I would appreciate that, yeah. Hero you, also sir? works. <laughs> Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formally, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? Oh my god, so much sass from this Lollafell. Right off the boat, man. This is some bullshit. You don't even know. You're unemployed. You don't even have a job, do you, Estinian? So you're between jobs. So you're a student or something. So you work on like, so you're a YouTuber. If you'll allow me. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Somebody's gonna help us out. Cryl, where have you been? My associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. Ugh. God. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. Look, Fan Daniel's nothing compared to this lady at the immigration office. He's got nothing on her, man. What a pain in the ass. Croyle, <laughs> it is good to see you. Likewise, long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Uh, yeah, let's go. Don't let her change her mind. Oh, Karen Lala. <laughs> I shouldn't be looking at chat, but it's funny about Welcome, friends, to Charlian. As your mercenary, <laughs> I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. Well, I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. Yeah, he couldn't figure out what his job is. That was pretty embarrassing. Well. <laughs> We're here. We made it. Glad I spotted your ship coming into port. The officers are born bureaucrats and sticklers for detail. In any case, you may relax and take a moment to get your... Land legs back. Mm, I'm so excited we made it. We made it, Charlene. <coughs> okay, 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 okay. I thought to launch directly into an explanation of what I've learned and how we might proceed. But if this is Zeppelin and Asinian's first time in Charlene, and for the rest of you, a homecoming that was long overdue. You must have places you wish to visit. People you're dying to see. I don't know where to go. <laughs> Therefore, I propose we postpone our agendas so that you may all have sufficient time to recover from your journey and get your bearings in the city. Yeah! Once you've settled in, we can reconvene at the Baldessian Annex. I don't have a feeling we're going to be spending a lot of time there. How does that sound? It is a fine suggestion. We may not be welcome at the Levier estate as such. You're not going to be welcome at your house? But I should like to nose around the neighborhood all the same. Yeah, because you got disowned. That's right. I am equally untethered, as it were. This, there's no particular place that my kin call home. Still, I would not pass up the opportunity to reacquaint myself with the city. Likewise, a quick tour of our old haunts might even yield some useful gossip. The annex was west of the Etherite Plaza, wasn't it? I shall show you a nod. We'll see you there. 
Where's the market board, honey? Show me to the market board. Where is the market board? <laughs> I too have places I would be remiss in not visiting forthwith. By thy leave. Bye. Bye. What of you, Estenian? My services as a guide are yours for the asking. He don't need a guide. It's Estenian. Of course, he prefers to wander as the wind takes him. Of course he does. But, but I could... He's gonna go off and be a Stinian. Raha, would you like to join us then? You've been gone for quite a while. This would be a perfect way to refresh those dusty old memories of yours. Of course! Yay! Raha, stay with us! Yay! Yay! Yeah! Stay. Good. Good. Don't leave me alone with Crom. <laughs> After you, my friend, I'm more than content to follow your lead. Excellent. Grahatia's now accompanying you. Keep him at your side. What? You can leave Grahatia behind by entering a different area. Never. No. Don't put too much distance. Hold his hand. Oh my god. You can also speak with Grahatia and select the option to part ways. If you wish to have Grahatia accompany you again, return and speak with him. Oh my god, yes. Come with me, Grahatia! Come with me! Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> oh my god, this is great. Um, let's talk. Do not forget Mistress Carl. I totally did. Okay. This is awesome. All set, let us be on our way. Our first stop will be the last stand. It's a cafe on the west side of the harbor. Okay. Carl is now accompanying you. Lead your two companions to the last stand and speak with Carl the designated location. This is so good. When you're accompanied, you may encounter conversation points along the way, which may offer additional topics of discussion. This is the best thing they've added besides everything else they added in Endwalker. <laughs> this is so good. I feel like this is one of those moments where I feel like the devs understand me so well and what I want. Okay, is, is it time for a G pose? Not yet, okay. Okay. Hey. What will you do? Discuss the storage facility. With all the unusual wares coming and going at all hours, expect the assistance of an intrepid adventurer would be highly appreciated. You want me to work here? I see no reason why you couldn't undertake any task which pique your interest. Um... I look forward to the day your name was celebrated in Charlie in the same way it is in Oh, that's why he wants me to like do some odd jobs around so that he can be extra proud of me. This place is called the Peristyle. It's the first stop for cargo unloaded at the docks. You'll find the, the usual necessities for daily living and other imports vital to running an island nation, but also supplies that further Charlian's pursuit of knowledge, namely a large quantity of, of books, specimens, and samples. Sorting these stacks Certainly seems to keep the attendants busy. Hey, <laughs> hey, uh, so right off, <laughs> as soon as you get off the boat in Charlian, the first thing that happens is a nut inspection. It was a nut inspection as soon as you arrive. So be careful of that. Uh, get your nuts ready for the, the nut inspection immediately. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna look at it pretty hard. <laughs> okay, what's over here? Mm. Graha? Discuss the giant statue in the harbor. Now that's a sight one could hardly forget, the great statue of Thaliac. 
As a student of Badassin, I was usually quartered on the Isle of Val, but I would gaze upon the scholar's wise features every time I returned by ship to the city. Uh, that's Thaliac. It's like Aquarius. <clears throat> Are y'all like into astrology here? This path leading out towards the sea is known as the Thaliac Stoa, named for the statue of the scholar which stands at its end. <clears throat> the Charlian people prized the accumulation of wisdom above all else when Thaliac was chosen as our patron deity. It was more of a matter of pragmatism than belief, an alignment of principles, as it were. We may have honored him with a rather impressive sculpture, but our faith <clears throat> is not so restrictive as that of, say, the Ish Guardians. Individual Charlians can and do worship the divinities of their choosing. What about you, Carl? You worship Thaliac? You worship literally worship Thaliac or do you honor Thaliac? Do you like Thaliac's what Thaliac is all about? Oh, Cryle, hey. I made it. Here we are, the last stand. I may have mentioned this before, but although our research into nutrition and food preparation is quite extensive, the average Charlian needs to tends to regard a seasoning and flavor with a certain indifference. Yo, I remember that bread that nasty, nasty bread. The loaf. Charlian loaf or whatever it was. <clears throat> How can I put this? The food is bland. As encapsulated by our infamous Archon loaf, the prevailing sentiment towards cuisine, cuisine is dietary value first and taste a distant second. You don't... Those two things don't have to be like separate but you know you can have both right <laughs> there was one people at the studio however who could stomach the school's insipid meals no longer he quit his lessons and poured all his savings into building a proper eatery and so the last stand came to be it's the name implies the sole dedicated outpost of fine dining in charlotte the one and only bastion of the culinary arts an isle of otherwise mediocre fare seem to recall their burger being hailed as one of the more impressive items on the menu. Um, is it, is it a vegan burger? Is it a veggie burger? Because you were a typical Charlian when it came to cheap and convenient, raha. Right? But surely Tatru has since taught you how to appreciate a well-prepared dish. We should all stop in when time permits. Shall we press on the stairs to the side of the cafe? We'll take us up to the Etherite right Plaza. Let's go! Ooh, nice! Trial, hey! Unusual shape, ain't it? I assure you, however, that's a perfectly functioning ether. I remember to attune yourself before we move on. Oh my god, I definitely would have forgot if she didn't say anything. Being the diligent tour guide that I am, I should make mention of the confluence. Oh no. <laughs> a chaotic confluence of untold proportions must needs be brought about. No. <laughs> Anyway, it's a research facility located on this very plaza. It's much vaunted discoveries are the reason Charlian stands at the forefront of teleportation technology. In deciphering the underlying principles of Allegan Etherides, it allowed us to understand and reconstruct what was essentially a lost art. Ooh. Off we go to our next destination. Our path leads northeast to the Agora, Charlene's largest, market, largest marketplace. So, it's near the market board. This is the etherite. Oh, but look at all the other little places that I can talk to the people in. Confluent. Speaking of etherites, those teleportation fees do add up after a while, which is why I tended to rely on the far cheaper ferry services. I was surprised when Tataru informed me that the Scions are reimbursed for transportation costs as part of our duties, but I find old habits hard to break. Where does the, like, gill go when you teleport? Like, where do you put it? Like, is there a coin slot? <laughs> I don't really understand. Who takes it? How do you put, like... 
That's the entrance to the confluence. I have no doubt their expertise will form clues useful at some point. Remember your way here. Okay, that's the confluence. Oh my god, that's the market board? Look, here's the- what? Wow. Nice. There's the etherite, and here's the market board. They definitely know what players want. This is what happens when you have devs that actually play the game. This is probably even more convenient than Limza. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, here's the market board. Here's the retainer bell. It's super, super convenient. I'm really happy about that. Hey, Kyle, what? The book stall, yeah, what's that? Little open air book stalls are so uniquely Charlian. I'd always thought them a common sight until I visited other nations. Well, don't they, you have to pay for them? Another. Do you mind if I browse the shelves for a moment? There might be some hidden gems I've yet to read. We won't wait around for you. Okay, come back later. Mm -hmm. Um, Kryle? Welcome to the Agora, where you can find wares made in Charlian as well as a wide selection of imported goods. They also used to sell questionable, questionable prototypes from the various research institutes. But I think that practice has thankfully died out for the most part. But wait a minute, how did I... Oh, I guess my retainer is allowed to be here because of the retainer book. That doesn't really need to be explained. I can think of no better place to stock up for your next big adventure. I certainly will be spending a lot of time here because it's so convenient. Am I overselling it? On a ser more serious note, the next stop on our tour is one which has particular relevance to our ultimate purpose here. We must head back to the Etherite Plaza, follow the path north, and climb the stairs up to that imposing building at the very top. Okay. Okay. Cryo? Discuss the water features. This is a nymphaeum. An area dedicated to the Blessings of water. And foam. For Charlians, water represents more than a life-sustaining liquid. It's a reminder of the great flood, which precipitated the birth of our nation, as well as a symbol of the knowledge which flows from Thaliac's divine ewer. This is the reason you see an abundance of fountains throughout the city and a propensity for utilizing water as a decorative feature in our architecture. These little decorative features are typical of Charlian architecture. Aside from the research wing, our headquarters on the Isle of Val were rather simple and rustic by comparison. Okay. <coughs> you like your water? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, Alright, we made it. The grand structure before you is the Rostra. The name refers to the original public platform erected here, upon which a forum of elected representatives would deliver orations and debate policy. Although this stage has since evolved into council chambers, the nature of the forum and the duties of its members remain largely unchanged. Am I boring you, Raha? You seem awfully distracted. Honestly, Kyle has been pretty boring throughout this tour. <laughs> My apologies from here. One can see the entire city spread out below. The Fista puts me in mind of my arrival in the first. Those who had gathered at the Crystal Tower asked me how they might go about building a new home. Naturally, my answers were all inspired by my knowledge of the finest settlement I could think of, the great city of Charlene. Bit by bit, those few buildings grew into a town, a community. The Crystarium, I can almost see its echo. Oh yeah. Those who gathered at the Crystal Tower. Yeah, it's it's like that. Hmm. 
It's crazy, like, I'm really glad that he said this and brought this up because he spent a hundred years leading the Christarium. It's, it's kind of mind-boggling to imagine that that happened. He has all those memories still. He's like a lot older than he seems. <clears throat> Feel free to come up here whenever you wish. I don't think the counselors would object to you simply enjoying with you. For now, the tour must go on. Our spectacle of sightseeing concludes with the fittingly named Journey's End. Walk down the stairs to the east and continue straight ahead. Okay. Next spot. We arrive at a Journey's End. History tells us that this was where those who put ashore with Archon Nunkrip built their first homes. In the present day, it serves as a residential district. <gasps> residential district? You'll see that one mansion is clearly larger than its neighbors. That estate belongs to our friends from House Levayur. All things considered, we should probably keep our distance for the time being. And with that, we bring our little Charlene tour to a close. I hope it has proven to be entertaining and enlightening experience. Head directly to Baldessi now, Annex. Yeah, let's go to our new headquarters. Let's go. It's so beautiful. It's so cool to be here for the first time. I'm super happy. Okay, Kryle. Uh, the, as the joyous look on Raha's face has undoubtedly informed you, this is the Valdesian Annex. If you continue up the hill, you arrive on the doorstep of Phenomenon, but I think we've explored enough for one day. I can take you there another time. Okay. Okay. Vibes. <clears throat> I'm back. Oh, the song, it's Newfoundland. It's my first time here in this one. Ooh, it's so chill, it's so relaxing. I brought Zeppelin Raha with me. You were right about the ship then. Hello, Graha, it's nice to see you again. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Zeppel, I've heard many a tale of your exploits. Ojika? Ojika Sunjika. It's been an age. Allow me to introduce Ojika, cousin of Ejika, Sunjika, and administration officer for the students of Odessi, and he oversees the day to day business of the Annex. Oh, he's Tataru, right? I read that he's the Tataru of the Annex. I read the reports on the Eureka Expedition. All right. Oh, Edgy. Oh, I remember him. Oh my God. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him. He was so difficult and so jelly. He was super jelly about not having, um, not being like Warrior of Light with the Echo. Yeah. He's impatient and impetuous, but a good sword at heart. He ended up being a likable character in the end, but for a while he was a real pain in the ass. This place is like a second home for the students. The Isle of Val served as our main headquarters, of course, but we often had occasion to visit Charlie. Uh, whether to make use of the city's research facilities, attend conferences, or procure supplies from distant shores, and the annex here was built to provide lodgings for our members while we engaged in such activity. Now that our former headquarters is on the wrong side of the world, among other things, the annex has become our new base of operations for all intents and purposes. And yet it feels so empty. With so many lost to us, our organization is a shell of its former self. Re yeah. The day will come when we will see the students rise again. But first, we must ensure that the Telophoroi fall. Well, yeah. Through that door on the left, there's a main hall. We can discuss our options moving forward. Once everyone arrives, that is, you probably have time to rest. 
before our discussions begin in earnest. Where can I, is there an, is there an inn here? Or something? Mmm! I've had private quarters prepared for you in the Andron. Please, make yourself at home, nice. Let's see it. The nap rooms. He wants a cat nap. I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. The chambers are quite well appointed. Far more so than some cheap roadside inn, you may be assured. You didn't give me the wrong impression, you just want a cat nap. You're a cat, I don't understand. It was simply that we were often so busy with research or exhausted from journeys abroad that we would slip into the Andron just to steal a few winks. And thus they became known as nap rooms, even if many such naps may last well into the following morning. Say the word and I'll be happy to show you to your chamber. Hopefully the others won't be too long in coming. Uh, okay, so I'll... Graha, can you bring me a sandwich in there? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waiting for my sandwich, Raha. That's the main hall. That's it, I guess. Wait, this isn't the... Where's the inn? Feeling refreshed and alert? Our colleagues should be wandering in soon. I suggest we stay here and wait for them to... I thought, I, I thought you said I could take a nap. I thought you said I could... No nap? I don't see any bed in here. Yeah, this isn't the nap room. Pray forgive me. I was delayed. Oh, voiced cutscene. It's important. It's fine, Orionje. We're all here now. Let's get down to business then, shall we? We want to pull out some chairs or anything? We're just going to stand? Okay. What may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. Mm. Uh, wait a second, I was watching Nora to see if she wants to go out the door. Are you okay? All right. We must ruin the Telvars from the information. Okay, so we have two paths for gathering information that will help us defeat the Telophoroi. Okay, I'm on board, I'm on board. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian, not to mention the recent inscrutable behavior of the forum. Um. Okay. The change. Yeah, oh, I remember that. That was from the previous story quest. As most of you know, the 99 members of the forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. That's really good. That sounds really good. The bibliotheques, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlie in focus on recording history while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. Uh, okay. Isn't that everybody? What everybody thinks here? And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy oh. and direct intervention. My grandfather, Gallif, was one such member, as was Archon Louisois. Proactive diplomacy? That can mean a lot of things. Okay. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. So what's going on here that's so, so bad? Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, it simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? What could that possibly be? What could possibly be worse than the literal apocalypse of the planet? 
A mystery indeed, and one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. Okay. Our organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. It's like the X-Files. <laughs> They've been working on the X-Files. Nice. Compared to our more isolationist Charlie and colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. I am all ab I'm all aboard for that. That sounds great. One of these posters needs to be like, the truth is out there. It kind of looks like this one. Truth is out there. The request in question Thabner! comes from one such acquaintance, Nadana, an alchemist residing in distant Thavnir. Okay. Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. Okay, so there were no towers appearing near Charlian? Clearly. Because nobody here seems worried about that. But we're hearing about it in Thabnair. And we're gonna need to go help them over there with that. In response to this threat, the Satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the spire. Mm. Wow, that was... Okay. So he just told them to deal with it? That's all, that's all he did? Figure the it out. of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. So the alchemists, they could actually be capable of handling it, and it wasn't just like a go deal with it, I can't help you? They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Uh, who, who do you have in mind? <laughs> Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kral's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavnair would seem the obvious choice. Mm. Right. Sounds good. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thabnerian one, given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. True. She's so cute. I love a shawl. Oh my god. Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. Uh... I don't think I'm gonna be helpful in the first one. Like, they don't know me. They don't want me here. I barely got past immigration. Like, I don't... Okay, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are indeed our champion. Of course. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. <laughs> Let us okay, next okay. decide how everyone else might best be assigned. As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Okay. Alize and I would also like to help, if you would have us. Who's... Moogles? 
poster? That's nice. Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the forum might be thinking. True. What the hell are they doing? Of course. The more the merrier. Right. The rest of us will make the journey to Thavner. Oh, it's Thavner. It's not Thavner. Thoughts? Objections? I passed through Thavner on my way to infiltrate the Empire. It's Thavner. And though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. Hmm. Okay. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriange. Okay. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Madonna's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful. Okay. Good. So I'm gonna just be, they're gonna ask me, do I wanna go to Thavnir first or Charlene first? How about? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. Uh, gear? An unsettling change has come over Charlian, but together we will divine the underlying cause of the form's callousness. As I mentioned before, however, questioning the counselors directly is a fruitless endeavor. They seem to have already come to a consensus as to what and how little they are willing to divulge, which is why I began scouring Charlian's archive of historical records for any hint of a connection to the final days. Suffice it to say, that progress has been slow, and there are only so many dusty pages one can skim in a day. But now that I have this band of willing reinforcements, this shirt search should proceed all the swifter. Let us reconvene outside Numenom, shall we? Exit the annex to the right, and you'll find the archives on the western edge of the woods. Okay. Crap, I missed my opportunity to, to talk to them. That sucks. Though I have read much on the subject of Razadhan, this visit shall be my first. It will be interesting to see how the Hanish mean to contend with the tower, different as their magical and technological dif disciplines are. The Hanish? So it's back to Thavnir. Had I known earlier, I would have considered more suitable attire. You can change now. You can take a shower, Istinian. Like, believe it or not. <laughs> Oh, do, should I pick both? Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I have Kral's instructions in hand. If you're ready to set out, then so are we. Having been to Thavnir, Thavnir before, I can travel by Aetherite. But what of the rest of you? Another sea voyage would waste time we do not have. Um. Um, I didn't think about that. I can fly? <laughs> Kral is of the same mind. We already secured the aid of the good folk of the confluence. We'll take ourselves there. We can teleport without being there? The confluence, thou sayest. Why do you seem upset? What? I'm afraid so. Oh, no. Oh no, I know why. Thou wilt recall the hunt for Ice Heart, unto whose sanctuary we delivered thee, owing to the knowledge of our comrade, Moonbrita. Moonbrita was an authority on etherology, a field of study she did embark upon in pursuit of her parents' example. Both are authorities in their own right, and both are researchers at the confluence haven't you gone to see them yet? No. I attempted to do so earlier, but to my shame, my courage failed me at the last. As it hath the many times I thought to reach out to them after sending that fateful letter. Neither time nor introspection have revealed unto me the words I should speak. And thus I've kept my silence. It's really, un it's understandable though. Like, when it comes to something like that be really difficult to say anything to the people that were affected. 
not, or what, know what to say. Whether you come with us or no is your choice and your choice alone. If it's too difficult, we'll manage. Thou art kind to say so, but I have no intention of forsaking our cause. I shall go to the confluence and I shall face that which hath long been overdue. If it's settled, then let us be off. When we arrive, we'll look for a researcher named Keet. Kite. Keet it. Keet it. I got my little book. Well now, this is rather a lot of stern faces. Are my library books ever due again? Not to our knowledge. We're associates of Kryle and the students of Aldessian. We seek passage to Thavnir and understand you can assist us. The test subjects, welcome, oh my god, what? What? You haven't heard? Allow me to explain. In order to travel to an etherite, you ordinarily need to be attuned to it beforehand. Otherwise, you can't use it as a beacon to seek out while you're a mess of ether hurtling along the live stream. An inconvenient but incontrovertible limitation of etherite teleportation. But what if I were to tell you that there's a way to travel to an etherite without being attuned to it? A way to teleport instantly to places you've never been. For long years, we labored to make such travel possible, and people might move about more freely. And we've finally done it. We've created a new kind of etherite that doesn't require attunement. Truly? That changes everything! This actually could have some terrifying implications for war. Because, first of all, having teleportation of any kind existing in a universe where uh, there is war and battle is scary. But imagine if your enemy can just teleport anywhere they want to go without being there. And you, like, you're completely screwed. Well, my language may have been a bit misleading. Oh. The user need not attune to these etherites, but the etherites themselves must have been pre-attuned to each other, thereby facilitating travel between the two points. But it just so happens that our first test pair of etherites, one has been installed here in Charlian, the other over in Yedlimad, a port town in Thavnir. As you may know, our nation has long maintained strong ties with Razat Han, and indeed, we owe much of this breakthrough to the contributions of their alchemists. Well, I want to hear more about these alchemists. Every time the alchemists are brought up, they're like, they're getting hyped up pretty hard. So to sum up, we're to test these etherites. How fortuitous for you. I should mention that an accent has impaired my ability to channel ether. Will this be a problem? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you might say these etherites were made for people like your good self. The magics imbued within will whisk you away without any effort on your part. The veritable dream come true. Far be it from me to worry about such things, but do we have permission to make use of your shiny new invention? The only permission required is yours, so assuming you're willing, we're all set. It may come as a surprise, but we actually struggle to find test subjects. Huh. Most people seem to have an unreasonable fear of their souls gradually disintegrating as they drift helplessly in the live stream. In the statistically unlikely event that something goes around. But it's plain that you aren't most people. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Mr. Scryle truly knows how to pick them. If I might change the subject, are Master Wilson and Mistress Blowita not present today? Oh, you didn't hear? They resigned their posts. Their expertise was needed elsewhere. A large-scale project helmed by the forum itself, as I understand, but I'm not privy to the details. I see. Any other questions? No? Then let's get going before you change your minds. Let's see to your preparations ahead outside the Etherite Plaza. Yeah, let's go to Razaha. Let's go. She's so cute. She is super cute. Yeah. Love her. She's very charming. Uh... See you shortly. Okay. Anything else I can snoop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Haha. <laughs> I teleported through the door. Right? Okay. I know a little something about teleportation myself. Actually. Yeah. Oh, she's actually a voice actress. It's awesome. Just the four of you, was it? Three. I'm already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. You are? Oh. I would have preferred more test subjects. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. Okay. Okay. Um. Yes, right there is fine. Take a deep breath, and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> A teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Good luck. What? I don't feel so good. <laughs> I don't feel so good. Mm. As long as I don't get DC'd, we're good. Charlie and now go in Plop. to Thavnir 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 home to city-state Rods at home. Oh my god, I'm in Thavnir, yes. Rising from the southeast waters of the bounty this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Mm. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay for a time. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? Uh. Uh. <laughs> I bet he's fine. What chance? Hey, it's a Reaper song. against such an insidious foe. Good. It's so good. Not feeling too good, huh? Failed your constitution check? Damn. I've seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. <laughs> we need... Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. I don't know. Hero the dog? Where are you bringing us? <laughs> it's gonna come back with like a bottle of whiskey for everybody. There was a note with Kryle's instructions. Don't let Astinian roam the markets alone. 
He's alarmingly bad with coin. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I gotta go stop him? Is that right? I'm gonna push through and stop him from spending all the money. Will we be able to reach Justinian in time? I don't know. Yes. Uh, I see him. Oh boy. Oh boy. Nausea. I got the nausea. I need a ginger cookie. You there, I need three drinks. Something that helps with ether sickness. B by the Manusia, a traveler. I mean, greetings. Greetings and welcome. Your wise good spirit come to me. My special Amra Lassi, made with only the finest and freshest ingredients, is famed for calming unruly bellies. By way of a warm welcome to Thavnir, I'm pleased to offer it to you for the low, low price of 19,800 gil for not one, but not two, three bottles. A bargain among bargains. The price is high road robbery. You want to say so much to a Sidian, but you realize any words of warnings you cry out would be accompanied by your last meal. Ew, gross. Stand before Sidian and deny the deal is fair. No. Give me the money. Give me the money. I thought you could barely stand. What do you need to tell me that's so urgent? <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't buy the lassie? This merchant is swindling me. Sincere apologies, sir, but I appear to have my prices confused. It's actually 1,890 yo for the three bottles of lassie. That confusion would have been quite costly for both of us. Very well, then. Okay. Uh, let's see. hope it helps. Hope that helps. Okay. He's going to go explore. That's all he does. He goes away to explore. <coughs> okay. I brought you that to help you with your tum tum. My stomach doth loosen its death grip. My heart felt thanks to thee and Astinian and to the fine fruits of this land. <laughs> you were in time. Excellent. You spared us Tantaru's wrath. Sweet release, if you haven't already, you should have yours too. Okay. <clears throat> I'm ready to get on with it. That lassie truly worked wonders. Back on your fate, I see. Thy hair. I, I've bound it. <laughs> This is the most I could do against this heat, short of shedding my armor. May I ask where you got the cord for it? A local vendor. Oh no. Oh no! The man said it's a Thavnarian weave, tough and not easily unraveled. How much did it cost? <laughs> 9400 gil! A steal, I was told! <laughs> Tis nothing fancy, but I've always valued function over form. That's incredible. I, I dare say not even Alphano can hold a candle to you. Uh. Hmm. 
I expected the Azure Dragoon to put up more of a fight. <laughs> On that subject, I shall refrain from making comment, yet I cannot help but observe that their merchants seem overzealous in their pursuit of profit. Just like any I mean, standard. Claiming Thavnir as its dominion, the nation of Razahan hath long thrived as a hub of commerce. In the beginning, there were the Arkasodara, Arkasodara, a Matanga tribe indigenous to the island. Over time, they came to be joined by other races, and through their intermingling, a culture rich and distinct did emerge. From alchemy to textiles, the products of Hanish culture have come to be celebrated and coveted the world over. A development only aided by the nation's prime location as a waypoint between east and west. All of this hath combined to make a trading power of Razathan, and such a status cannot be taken for granted. Nay, it must needs be maintained through judicious governance and stringent regulation. Neither of which I see any evidence, given that merchants at a gateway town are free to fleece hapless visitors and tarnish the reputation of the nation at large. Okay. Just so, that opportunistic pricing is rampant, doth suggest that oversight is much weakened, or mayhap that the people have fallen upon hard times. It's just, it's, it's a free market, I guess. <laughs> Whatever the truth may be, it would be prudent to ascertain the current state of affairs. Prudent and practical. We are not to lose by learning more. So, ere we seek out Kryle's acquaintance, shall we see what information we can gather here in Yedlimon? Uh, I, I don't know if I agree with, like, their assessment, because just because you get to a new town and they notice you're a foreigner, so they charge you like a hundred times more, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is some kind of, this is an indicator of some broader political climate. It's just like, they notice you're a foreigner, so they're going to charge you a hundred times more because they know they can get away with it. But I guess they're saying, oh, there's no laws against doing that to people? Well, I mean, how would you even enforce that with little tiny little shops immediately off the, uh, at the bay, like, I don't know. Ooh, it's foggy here now. We didn't exactly get off to a flying start, but we'll make up for it. Let us split up and make inquiries in town. Zeppla, the pier is yours. Once we've learned what we can, we regroup by the etherite, off-putting, though the mere side of it may be. Mm, well, if there's not a lot of activity here... I mean, it's... I'm not going to rule it out, the theory that Rianje had... You can't rule that out. Like, it's possible that what we've seen so far is symptoms of a bigger problem. I mean, story-wise, it's more likely that because that would explain why we had that experience in the story. It's a plot point. What am I doing? Oh, recording my sales. Still do it daily out of habit, though I don't know why I bother. Hardly sell anything these days. Yeah, see, it's the same. Nobody's selling anything. And that's why they're trying to get the most out of anybody they can is because it's hard times here. Business has never been this terrible, but I suppose things could be even worse. I could have a consortium to keep afloat, like Kalzal. She's cute. I don't envy his position. Better to be alone with my little operation, I've come to realize. Can we swim? I'll check. Well, probably not. I don't see anybody in the water. You're a rare sight in these unsettled times. People have been giving us a wide berth since that accursed tower suddenly appeared. Well, that makes sense. It's terrifying. If it just stood there, 
and loomed ominously. Perhaps things would be fine after a fashion, but no, it had to spawn fell fiends as well. We still have our lives thanks to the radiant host, but business is as good as dead. What'll become of us? Only the gods know. Yeah, isn't it? Aren't people like going missing? Hey, Kozel. Hey. Well, the Damascans aren't coming, but we already have everything they ordered. What are we supposed to do with it? I don't know, but yelling at me isn't going to help. All I know is that their plans have changed, and that's that. Look, you must have known this might happen. The Empire is at war with itself, and the provinces are in chaos. And then, there's the tower sitting on our doorstep, spitting out monstrosities. The city has its defenses, but we've been afforded no protection out here. We can't blame foreigners for not wanting to take the risk. Ugh, but this will be an enormous loss. All right, all right. Forget about the Damascans. Surely some ships are still coming. We have fresh produce, handicrafts, medicines, all the perennial Hanish favorites. Our consortium works closely with merchants and artisans to supply only the finest wares. Quality is guaranteed. I know all these things, Kalzal. I do. Which is why I regret to say I have nothing for you. All voyages have been canceled or indefinitely postponed. Oh my god, it's horrible. And you are? Wait, you're a foreigner, are you not? A merchant? Please tell me you're a merchant. No. I see. That's a shame. I'm sorry, but we're discussing important matters. If you need something, please talk to one of the others. Um, excuse me? M my name is Matsya. I'm here to see Kalzal. Matsya, what's wrong, buddy? Oh, it seems he's busy. I'll come back later then. No, what do you need? Friendo. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yes, can I help you? I remember seeing you back in the guild. You wanted to speak with Kazal too, did you? I'm Matsya, a fisherman of Ikali, a nearby village. I sell my catch to Kazal, who offers it to foreign merchants. Oh no! But he hasn't bought anything for a while now. When I heard that the consortium had been struggling, I became worried and decided to come and see him. Just as soon as he's free, anyway. He's a hardworking man, and I dare not disturb him. Oh my god, this is really upsetting. Um, if I may ask, what is it that you do? I'm a reaper. <laughs> An adventure, you say. And you travel the world helping people. Then that must mean you're great at dealing with strangers. Please. Won't you teach me to be like you? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so cute. You see, I've brought some fresh fish with me. The portion I couldn't preserve, and I want to sell them. The problem is I'm terrible with people. No, you're not, sweetie. I've only ever dealt with Kalzal, and I can't talk to customers without getting my trunk in a twist. So please, as silly as it might sound, Will you not peddle the fish in my stead and show me how it's done? Oh my god. Oh my god. If you're willing, please let me know. I'll help you. The events to follow cannot be... I wouldn't skip this for anything, Matsya. We're gonna, we're gonna get you back on your feet. Okay. Your hooves, or whatever. <laughs> it's not exactly hooves, but it's not exactly feet either. What are they called? Probably just feet. Anyways, you'll do it then. <laughs> Show me how to deal with customers. Yes, I will teach you how to deal. I am good at dealing with people. Okay. <laughs> right. Please try paddling my fish shoe, shall we say. Three people here. 
I'll observe you and learn. So, uh, so Matsya, where did you keep uh, your fish? Did you bring them in a trunk? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's, let's uh, sell it. Yes. Uh, fish, <laughs> wait a second. Uh, Fish, fish! I got fish here. Fresh fish straight from the sea. Push them to your mouth. <laughs> I'm sure your bosom fish are very fresh. <laughs> this is all rather sudden. <laughs> this got weird quick. Uh, okay. Um, that's uh, that did not work. Never mind, it never goes well the first time. I'm sure you'll fare better with the next customer. I think he misunderstood uh, what I was offering. Hmm, <laughs> you sell fruit? If so, I want to buy some armor. Let's say it doesn't. Uh, what, <laughs> what do you need so many Amra for? For eating, of course. It may seem like a lot, but of late, I go through that much in no time at all. I'm a stock taker by trade, but with no vessels coming these days, the wares are beginning to pile up. By the same token, nothing is coming in from overseas. But not a gaze of gaze spy that someone doesn't come along asking when the next shipment is arriving for this and that and this and that. I thought if it wears me down, I find myself actually hungry. I know how you feel. Thank you. A pity you don't sell fruit. But I enjoyed our little chat to wind mine off my troubles for a moment. Wait! But uh, I didn't end the conversation! Square Enix ended the conversation! That's bull crap! I wasn't <laughs> done talking! We were done. Don't look at me like that. Never mind. If nothing else, you left her with a positive impression. He just, he side eyed me. Did you see that? He's like. You know what? How about I just buy your fish? Okay? Like. I will buy all your fish. What is it? If you don't mind, I'm rather busy. Oh God, it's my stomach. Ugh. Ether sickness? No, nothing so unusual. Am I hurry to get back to work? I just ate a little too quickly. Uh. <clears throat> you should. Some fresh fish will settle your stomach. Mine are the freshest of all. <laughs> Food is the last thing I need right now. Oh no! God, this is horrible. We pressed him at a bad time. Timing is everything, yes? Thank you so much for it. <laughs> Zero out of three, man. I was like, the, the other two times I did the set, like the more chill approach, it didn't work. Well, the first time I did the aggressive approach and it didn't work. The second time I did a more chill approach and it didn't work. And the third time I was like, oh, well, I'll be aggressive again because he seems like a hyped up guy. So I'm gonna be hyped up. I'm gonna match his energy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing out here. Okay, I really do not know. I feel so bad for Matsya. Like, not only is he struggling to survive, 
All he wants, all he does is catch fish and try to sell it. And the guy's not buying it anymore. And he just doesn't know what to do. He's scared to talk to people. And he thought maybe I could help him. And I'm just like the worst, <laughs> the actual worst. Okay, um, so let's talk about how that went. Maybe you can learn like what not to do. Have you thought about that? <laughs> That's probably more helpful. Thank you so much for showing me. <laughs> it, was like, it was a meme at the start, but I'm like, I'm good at dealing with people. <laughs> it's actually, uh, that, that was fulfilled. That was made real. Though you didn't manage to sell any fish in the end, the way you fearlessly approach strangers <laughs> gave me much courage. Well, I don't know. I don't know how to sell fish. Okay, I'm vegan, so I don't. <laughs> Maybe you gave me some apples. What about all my wares? I'll remember your example. An endeavor to be fearless, too. Okay. You're so sweet. So there's only so much I can do alone. I hope that things will return to normal for calls all soon. I thought I heard a familiar voice. And who would it be but Matsya? Calls all. If you're mean to him, I will kick your ass right here. You better not. Calls all. Have you finished your business at the guild? So you were there too. Okay. He's not mean. Forgive me. Try as I might. I can't find any buyers. With no ships coming in. And hardly any going out. There simply aren't any options. At this rate. So. You can't buy my fish anymore. Oh my god. I'm sorry Matsya. I truly am. But for now. You must peddle your own goods. Oh no. Oh my god. I'm going to cry. I want to help you. I do. But as it stands. I can barely help myself. I've poured my all into the consortium. And I'll be damned if I let it fall apart. <clears throat> I have friends and families depending on me. And I can't. I won't fail them. The sisters as my witness. Calls on. Oh, no. Not to worry. Using what I've learned from you. <laughs> that's, that's not good, man. That's not good. Why don't you just come back with me to the lavender beds? Like, you can... I'm not there most of the time. You can... I have a garden and stuff. Thanks again. Please take care on the road. Well, you have your village. That was so sad. He's gone and I, I couldn't help. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sell a single fish. I see you've been busy. Managed to learn a tidbit or two? Yeah, I learned a lot. This village is completely screwed. I see. We also heard that the tower is affecting many locals' livelihoods, but to think that it would be to such an extent. For another notable, if not wholly unexpected, discovery, disappearances and kidnappings are disturbingly commonplace. As before, the culprits are almost certainly tempered imperial soldiers. And as before, they mean to use the faith of their hapless thralls to call forth a lunar primal, business as usual for the Talaferoi. This is really bad. The Matsya fellow you were helping. He's Ar Arkasodara, is he not? Arkasodara. Apparently, it is almost exclusively his people that are being kidnapped. Should he be traveling alone? If summoning is this perpetrator's aim, it doth stand to reason that Arkasodara would be their primary targets. For tis the faith of their ancestors which prevaileth in this land, and many are devout adherents still. We better go after him, 
Akali lies to the west, and as I recall, the same direction as Kral's acquaintance, incidentally. We have to go help him, okay. We cannot just leave him to his fate. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go right now. Let's fix it right now. Mm -hmm. Looking for my friend. I'm just gonna call him Matt. <laughs> oh, Matt. You don't see Matt from here either. No, no, leave me alone. Help! Oh my god, you're in trouble, Matt! We gotta save you! Oh no! If anybody tries to hurt my buddy, Matt, I will literally slice them into pieces with my scythe and then I will feed their soul to my void scent. You. Fuel gather fuel, they said. No, it's my. You're, you're gonna be fuel. You're gonna be the fuel here. Yes! You're gonna get got. Thanks. I still need to think of a good name for my avatar. I'm thinking on that. Oh my god. Are, are you hurt? Are you okay? Huh? Where did they go? Why are you here? I see you found them in time. Mm hmm you, you and your friends came to look for me? I don't know how to thank you. On my way home, I took a moment to stop and rest. Think about what to do about, well, everything. And then those men came. Kidnappers. We'd heard that the Arcasadara were being targeted. Surely you have as well? Perhaps it best if you took refuge in the city. We must protect! We've considered it, me and the others, but fishing is all we know. The ocean is all we have. I see. It's your decision to make, but you should take care not to travel alone. A question, if I may. Tis our understanding that strange fiends have emerged from the tower. What canst thou tell us of these beings? Not much, I'm afraid. I've no idea what they are. But have heard that some bear an unsettling resemblance to our divinities. For that reason, some have taken to calling the tower Zot. Oh, no. House of Divinities in the old tongue, it means. But they're not true divinities. They're monstrous imitations that bring only death. To have one's faith so twisted is a grievous indignity, and full justified art thou in thine outrage. Know that tis for no other purpose but to neutralize the tower that we have journeyed to this land. In time, we may be forced to contend with these false gods, and thus we must learn all we may about them, wilt thou not tell us of thy divinities and their true nature? You've come all this way to save us? Really? To think I had you peddling fish? But to answer your question, yes, of course. We would gladly tell you about our gods. We, I say, because I'm a terrible storyteller, and I'd ask my fellow villagers to do it. So please, come to our village. We're good God's fearing folk, all of us, and we'd be honored to share our knowledge. And fish. What sayest thou? Well, we're going. We're going to go anyway, but. <laughs> Wonderful. Just follow the road west and down the hill. You can't miss it. Okay. You better not wander off. Where are you going? You stay here. So, there's a salt. Simulacra of Thavnerian gods that are being summoned. If any doubt existed before, there can be none now. The kidnapped Tanish are imprisoned in the tower. I pray that we'll be able to save them. I doubt it. 
Though indeed, saving them will mean confronting their false gods like as not. I, as you said, we do well to study their religious traditions. To you, Akali. All right, off we go. We gotta help with the fish problem as well. Okay, there's Matt. This is it? Akali. <clears throat> yeah, this is it. It's tiny. <clears throat> Welcome to Akali, my friend. The name means white beach, and there isn't much here save that, but please make yourself at home. Your companions have already begun talking to everyone. Feel free to show yourself around and do the same. Any one of us can tell you about our gods, but you could do worse than to start with Kanga and old Hasveda. They're free at the moment, as it happens. Okay. Interested in learning about our gods, you say? <laughs> it's all on Face 4. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Prick up your ears then and listen. My ears are always pricked. Don't worry. <laughs> In ancient times, the Manusia and the Murga, deities who look like men and beasts respectively, were locked in conflict. Eventually, seeking the wisdom of the Manusia, the Murga cast aside their own heads and took up those of their foes. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Likewise, the Manusia coveted the might of the Murga, and so they too resolved to trade heads. Oh, so this is a mutually agreed upon arrangement. Okay. Thus were born new gods, possessed of both might and wisdom and they ushered in an age of harmony between the two factions. All they had to do was remove their heads. Uh, okay. Then, <clears throat> from then on, as a sign of es their esteem for one another, the Manusia have worn animal faces and Murga the limbs of men. Hey! You wish to know about our gods? What a curious visitor you are. Most want fish. In any case, I'm happy to oblige. Now, I don't know how it is once you hail, but our isle is home to many gods. <clears throat> they can be divided into two groups, the Manusia, beings of wisdom, who assume the form of men, and the Murga, beings of might, who assume the form of beasts. Together, they are divinities. Their forms and personalities, many and varied, some are kind and gentle, others stern and temperamental, just like we mortals can be. All are possessed of great insight and experience, and by heeding their teachings, we strive to be better people and live better lives. That was really vague. He didn't tell me about... The other guy gave me the real, the real scoop about the head trading. That's kind of important. And there you are. Learned a thing or two about our gods? Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> While you were off talking to the others, I remember something that may be of interest. If you could let your friends know. I'll go and fetch it from my home at once. Uh, okay. Sure. Apologies for the wait. I wish to show you this hanging scroll, which depicts three of our most revered deities. By all means, we should like to see it. Yeah, can this see? Okay. Uh oh. They are Minusia. You heard about them already, yes? Three sisters. I have heard about them already. <laughs> yeah. They're in FF4, so. The center one is the eldest, Sindaruva, a goddess of wisdom. For this, alchemists hold her in the highest. To her right is the middle sister, Sandaruva. As a goddess of wealth, she counts many traitors among her followers. Cindy, Sandy, and Mindy. <clears throat> On the left is Mindaruva, the youngest. 
She presides over the crafts and so is beloved by weavers. Although each is worshipped for different reasons, the sisters are usually portrayed together in these works, which people keep in their homes for good fortune. In like fashion to the Minusia, the deities of Eorzea preside over myriad aspects of life. And what of the Murga, if I may ask? The Murga hold power over nature. In ages past, they were revered as guardian deities in times of conflict. If you have the occasion to visit our temples and ruins, you'll find their images there. Among them is a god who possesses a gaja's head, and he is venerated as the progenitor of the Arkasodara. And then there are dragons. They occupy a special place in our history. You worship dragons too. It's said that an ancestor of the Satrap, that's the ruler of Radzad Han, forged a covenant with a dragon divinity in ancient times. This divinity has since acted as the guardian deity of the Satrap. Le legend holds that if ever the Satrap is in need, his dragon ally will fly to his aid. Dragon ally. Who could it be? You claimed to be a terrible storyteller, but nothing could be further from the truth. The passion you bear for your faith is plain to hear. I'm confident that the inf information you're giving us will serve us well in our efforts to deal with the tower. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. I will pray for your success. Right. <clears throat> I believe it's time we sought out Kryle's acquaintance, an alchemist by the name of Nidana. According to Kryle's notes, we're to find her at a place called the Great Work, further north along the coast. Okay, let's go. Let's go see. D did you say you were going to see Nidana? Oh, how I envy you. She's brilliant and beautiful, kind and understanding. And did I say she's beautiful? I could stare at her dainty ears and adorable trunk all day. And those eyes when you meet her. Take care you don't drown in them. Oh, that's so cute. Matt keeps getting more cute. The great work situated at a cove to the north. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the alchemist. <gasps> what? Oh no! I didn't expect this. Okay, this is not what I expected. Perhaps I got a misdirection. Oh my god! What happened here? Oh my god, Estadian's voice is so good. So good. Their dress marks them as alchemists. I see no evidence of injury or poison. Thinkest thou they but slumber? I believe so. Whether it is by choice is another question entirely. For some reason I think not. Oh, we have guests. You must excuse the poor welcome. Long days and longer nights have taken their toll, as you can see. Uh... What? I am Vashan, servant to the Satrap. My task was, in fact, to wake these good men and women, if you will allow. Okay... Why are they asleep? You want to tell us? People <laughs> of the great work, I come bearing new scales. Mm. Scales? We have new scales? What the hell is going on here? What kind of a yes, place is my it? friends, gather round. I have them right here. Are we doing drugs? Oh, happy day. 
Now I can continue my experiment. Many thanks. One for me. Those are dragon scales. Uh... Yes, such materials are vital to their most pressing research. Where'd you get those? And we are fortunate to have them. Our experiments are so close to bearing fruit. Soon we will have a talisman capable of nullifying the etheric emissions from that accursed tower. That seems important. Did, did okay. I say something wrong? Okay. Are you not here with Varshan? Wait, who are you people? Of course! You're the one Kryl sent. The warrior of light we've been waiting for. This is all part of the plan. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a day of celebration. Oh my god, Praise these people are so to Cinderova! But why were they, uh, sleeping? The winds have shifted. I feel it. The end to our toil is near. I feel it too. My head hasn't been this clear in days. Okay, so... Tell me, how did you acquire those scales? Yeah, that's the first question. Curious that it concerns you so. This this kid is sus, man. But worry not. <laughs> they were freely given by the dragon with whom our oh. satrap has forged a lawful pact. Okay. Okay, so it's fine. Alright. <laughs> it's just felt really sus. That is well. You must be quite familiar with Dragon King, yes? Is this their congealed blood I see on your weapon? That's what you get for not washing mm. your weapon. Speaking of dragon blood, you yourself have been infused with it, have you not? Or taking a shower? I should like to draw a file or two, if so. I told you to take a shower back when we were in the Charlene, man. You don't listen. No. See here. Come along, come along. I must insist that you visit our laboratory. <laughs> These people are scary. Cease your shoving, or so help me. But, uh, they have a. They seem to oh, fixated on Estinian. Companion, what with the new scales and your timely arrival, my colleagues are a little giddy with excitement. No yeah. harm will come to him. I promise. Okay. Meanwhile, shall we find a quiet place to talk? Okay, I trust her. I trust her, so it's fine. As you may have guessed, I am Nidana, the alchemist who sent a request to your mistress, Kryl. We have workshops across the nation collaborating on this research project. But it is here, at the Great Work, where I collate our results. So I guess the sleeping, that was probably like an experiment. Come with me, all of you, and I can explain <laughs> the crux of the situation. This is a social experiment. Just a prank. Allow me to thank you for answering our call. Many towers have appeared around the world, and we are grateful that you would assist with ours. So Kyla herself is tied up with another investigation, Zeppela is an eminently capable substitute and will spare no effort to aid you. So, if I understand correctly, you seek to make talismans that can nullify etheric emissions. Indeed we do. As you know, the tower emits vast concentrations of ether, one cannot go anywhere near it without being tempered. As such, we can only study the tower from afar and are powerless to deal with it in any consequential way. In order to strike back, the satrap bade us alchemists create enchanted talismans, talismans that will allow our soldiers to venture into the tower even should they lack innate protection. Could such a thing be possible? Admittedly, we are still in the midst of testing, but we are quite confident. Even prior to this, our people have long pursued countermeasures against the etheric corruption of primals. 
Of the methods tested to date, those utilizing dragon scales proved the most promising. Owing to their etheric density, the scales are highly resistant to disruptive forces. The mightier the dragon, the greater the resistance. We seek to amplify this protective property through our alchemy. Thanks to these scales provided by His Excellency, we have been able to make steady progress with the talisman. Soon we'll be ready to conduct a field test. And here is where you and your blessing of light come in. Uh, mm, what exactly is it that you need me to do? Nothing complicated, I assure you. We ask only that you serve as an escort. I will explain in greater detail later, but you will be venturing into the tower's field of influence. And so for your own safety, I would first test how well your blessing is shields you, with your permission. Yeah. It's a 100% effective shield. Uh, I'm completely f immune to any problem because I have a plot armor. <laughs> in that case, Ariane and I will find other ways to make ourselves useful. Seeing as you all work to the point of collapse, I suspect you could do with more hands. That was why they were, they were collapsed? Were they just collapsed from work? Was that what happened? Were they literally just laying there from like being tired? I'm, I have honestly have no idea why they were laying, like I, I'm so confused by that. Did I miss something? Was it supposed to be as weird as it seemed to me? If you're ready, let us put your blessing to the proof. If you exit the great work and turn south, there will be a hill to the right. I will meet you at the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is gorgeous. Uh, Thab Thabner is absolutely beautiful. I love the vibe here, like the Indian influence aesthetic is is amazing and i do like i've only been here a really short period of time but i i really do care about these people and what happens to them like i feel invested i like that they're continuing the meme of Estinian not taking a shower i wish that he really would i wish he would though um getting to this village was extremely weird and absurd and uh well it's just those kinds of weird moments that stick in your memory in this game i hope you didn't have trouble finding this place or climbing the hill uh i mounted up to come up here i didn't <laughs> i give you the fruit of our sweat tears and many a sleepless night the drunken deepa a deepa is a lantern presented to the gods as an offering Taking inspiration from the tradition, we created this device to test the talisman's efficacy. Upon activation, it will move a certain distance before emitting a powerful blast of ether. In lieu of corruption, those lacking sufficient protection will experience severe ether sickness. Please, no more of that. Not again, please. Oh my god, look at that bunny boy. Look how... Oh my god. He looks so good. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry, what? But were you s For your test, you'll be exposed four times. Wait, what? <laughs> that should be enough to ascertain your blessing's protective capability. Please begin whenever you're ready. I shall be observing from a safe distance. Ready to discharge. Okay. <laughs> My character's like... I'm fine, actually. Subject has no irrepressible urge to empty their stomach. Confirmed, resuming test, please follow. Okay, we're good, so far so good. Okay, one more. Will this one be the one that's knocks me on my ass? Well, let's find out. You survived completely unscathed. Etheric exposure testing concluded. Please collect and deliver me to the supervising alchemist. 
Okay. It was easy. You've returned and not on your knees. A promising sign, but come let me take the deep off your hands. Feeling perfectly fine? This is the second time I've been somebody's test subject. Then the strength of your blessing is beyond doubt. There is no risk that the tower will corrupt your ether. With this, we can request your aid for the task ahead with easy hearts. You're a capable warrior too, are you not? Would you be amenable to assisting me with another errand? You see, our talisman requires the use of a special ink, but we have exhausted our stores of a key ingredient for it, spirit weed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they were using with it. Okay, this the <laughs> herb grows not far from here, and I would like to go and harvest some. With the recent spate of pandemics, however, we are Casorara, travel alone at our peril. Will you not come with me as my escort? Of course. I'd be happy to. I'm in your debt. Without further ado, let's head to Kajaya's footsteps. It's situated on the road, which runs east of the Great Work. <laughs> well, yes, that would be Raj Adhan. Hardly anyone has been allowed in or out since our troubles with the tower began. It's really beautiful. The faithful citizens huddle inside the city walls, and commerce has all but ground to a standstill. I pity the satrap, the trials he must be facing. Hmm. What can you tell me of the satrap? Well, he... He is the most important person in Radzadhan. Long ago, this island was home to two tribes of Matanga. The Gajasura and the Arkasodra. Arkasodra. Oh my gosh. I struggled to say this. When the Aura came to these shores, it was the Arkasodra with whom they joined forces. Together they defeated the war like Gajasura, forcing them to flee Thavnair altogether. Peace and prosperity reigned for a time, until a clan of Hyor from the mainland decided they wanted the island for themselves. <clears throat> oh no. Oh, maybe the other brand of um, elephant people is the ones that went to Azamstep and are like harassing the Ara. It was a direct ancestor of the present satrap who arbitrated that conflict and welded the warring factions into the nation we know today. Uh... Oh, I see. Okay. And ever since, a member of that esteemed lineage has inherited this somewhat unique position. You see, by and large, the state is run by the people, but when problems arise, it is the satrap who mediates the solution. The stability provided by the satrap is what has allowed Raz Adhan to thrive all these years. Mm -hmm. And it was the satrap himself who entrusted us with this duty. We will not fail him, nor our countrymen. When will I get to go in? What is the delay with the vessel? I told you I need to adjust those ratios. I come all this way to admire one of my splendid towers. And what do I find? Fools attempting to ward off its tempering influence with magic trinkets. Yeah, I guess it's about time this dude showed up. <laughs> I seem to recall a similar experiment in ages past. What was that man's name? Oh, something? Oe? Oh, 
Another body, another time. Who could be expected to remember every trivial detail? Hmm. Allowing them to construct such handy talismans would be counterproductive to my plans. What did that mean? Another body, another time. And yet, I find myself deathly curious. How will they manage this feat? With the limited knowledge and resources at their disposal. Did his voice actor just change? He sounds... Am I, am I crazy? Did that... <laughs> Complications be damned. For we cannot escape the nature of our souls. And I, as ever, am my own worst enemy. What the hell just happened? It was right after he said another body, another time. And now, he has a different voice actor. He had like a shift, like an obvious shadowy shift. What the hell is this thing, man? I, as ever, am my own worst enemy. Oh my god, this dude, what? Character seems I hopeful. I see our taskmasters have allowed you a moment's respite as well. Hopeful? You have to hand it to these alchemists. They are determined to see this endeavor of theirs succeed. Mm. I've never been one for blind optimism, but I sincerely get the sense they're close to a breakthrough. Yeah, I agree. They had better be, or all this effort was for naught. The peoples of Eorzea, of the Far East, of Tavner, Children of this star united in common cause against a dire threat. Yet ere they succumbed to suicidal madness, were not the Telophoroi born of her body as were we? Yes. That's the real question, isn't it? What is wrong with them? They who cling to life and the promise of the morrow's dawn against they who desire death and an ending of their own orchestration. The victors of this war alone will hold the right to answer the question of existence, of its meaning, and its worth. <clears throat> Poetic and ominous to a fault, that said. If it's an existential debate in nature, then our arguments might not be as persuasive as you'd think. Van Daniel wants to die and take everyone with him in an orgy of pain and suffering. An utterly vile and unforgivable idea. Yeah. And yet, when spat upon by fate and wailing in the deepest pit of despair, who among us can say they have not entertained similar thoughts? Uh... uh I definitely never wanted to kill everyone now. I definitely never wanted to do that. There are nights black as pitch, bereft of hope, and no words of comfort can reach you. And it's all you can do to grit your teeth and choke back the bile. The more you see and suffer life's injustices, the more difficult they become to bear. Vengeance is nurtured in similar soil. Though your anger has a broader focus, the sentiment is much the same. A fervent desire to destroy others. 
to see them drown in torment as you have. He thinks it's about vengeance? Like there's a reason that Van Daniel is the way he is? That about sums it up. The will to endure is not always as strong as the urge to burn it all down and salt the earth. Survival be damned. It's a struggle, often close and brutal. Indeed. Well, I, for one, shall pray survival proveth more appealing in the end. As will I. Besides, our chances are much improved when we've the company of others committed to the cause of life. Our vengeful dragoon here is proof of that. Uh, Jesus. True. He's the vengeance expert. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh no. I love how my character just, without hesitation, runs after see? him like, I got, I'm gonna, we got him right now. I'm gonna kick his ass right now. Fan Daniel, are you sure? If he knows we've been working on a countermeasure. How could he not know? Like, he, he literally exists in the shadows. Like, he can watch everything you're doing. Of course he knows. It holds. The vessel holds. This is the one! At long last! So it worked? Look! We have finally created a talisman strong enough to withstand our experiments! Nice. We've named it a warding scale for the time being. With this in your possession, your soul should be completely shielded from corruptive ether. Pretty awesome. Afforded such protection, any one of us may approach the towers without fear. Thou hast mine admiration. Tis an invention of historical significance. Yeah, that's awesome. I thank you for your kind words. But I would prefer you keep them unsaid until we test the talisman's efficacy in the field. It is for the next stage of our plan that we summoned you in the first place. To accompany me to the Tower of Zot. Should the scale prove effective, as I very much hope it will, then you'll have little to do. But should the effect be weaker than anticipated, I must ask that you restrain me. Or knock me senseless. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Either way, we are fortunate to have you with us. Nidana, I... Are you certain you wish to do this? Yeah, what if... Can't anyone else go? Because they specifically want... If to trust our creations, then we must have faith in them first. And, as the senior researcher, it falls to me to lead by example. Uh, this feels like a bad idea. Like, really bad idea. Super but bad. should I fail to return, then learn what you can from this attempt and apply it to the next. Our work must continue. Is that clear? I just don't see how she's gonna make it out. I really don't. I really, really don't. Hoping? Praying? We'll but. keep an eye on the place while you're away. Assuming Fan Daniel is lurking about, there's no telling what mischief he has in mind for us or you. Be on your gut. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. Shall we be on our way? <clears throat> I have one of the soldiers at the hatchery prepare us a boat, and we can set out from the northern shore. I'll see you there. Okay. Okay, but you really shouldn't come with us. Pick anyone else that's not uh, Matanga. Like, literally, because I think that's all they want, right? Right now? Do they want the other people? 
I'm thinking back to how Natsuko Ishikawa, uh, the writer, she said that her favorite, one of her favorite characters was Fan Daniel. Like she was asked, what's your favorite characters? And she said Fan Daniel and like Omega, which is really weird. It's really, really weird. <coughs> we should soon cross the threshold of the Tower's influence. Any moment now. It's working! And you, you are still yourself? Then I'd like to see how it fares closer to the tower if we could. Okay. I'll be fine, don't worry about me. I'm good. You're the one we need to worry about. So far, so good. The scale's protection appears to be holding. If we can just make it to the tower's entrance. Seeming unbothered, <laughs> like this is all fine. A few more steps. Oh my god, something, uh, oh my god. Hmm. Praise be to the sisters, we made it! And the scale has proven itself to be everything we hoped it would be. Now we can focus on production. Once we've equipped and returned with an entire survey team, this menace will soon give up its secrets. What? Oh no. Oh no! We gotta, I gotta go get her. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the part I was, I was spoiled that she would get taken. But I didn't know how that would occur. So now I've seen. That's all I know. Oh my god. Oh, they're in the wall. There's... Are they dead? Found Daniel. Piece of shit. Oh, let me go! Oh, let me go! Oh. oh, do calm down. You'll only hurt yourself thrashing about like that. Stop! Oh, you can't do this! Please! Shit, man. No. I'm not gonna be able to save her. I don't think I'm gonna be able to save her. Shit. A little late for heroics, I'm afraid. Mm. The similarities are striking. My, my! Such hostility! Never before has my artistry so displeased. My patrons of old would have positively squealed in delight, though. Between you and me, I find gushing praise exhausting. What the fuck is this? Oh. <clears throat> Patrons have old.
Allow me to tell you a story. Surely you've yet to hear the one about Van Daniel, the Sundered Asian. I inherited the position and the soul of the Van Daniel who sat on the convocation in the time of the final days, theoretically speaking. Practically speaking, that fact is of no consequence. I was born and lived as, well, me. Um. Okay. Eventually, I was recruited into the Asians and imbued with the former Fan Daniel's knowledge and memories, but. I never felt that they were truly a part of who I am. So he's just like one of the sundered shard reflections of Fan Daniel that sat on the convocation. But he's so far removed from that original soul that he's just doesn't actually care about. the duty that Van Daniel had. How to explain? Now, perhaps if I told you who I was before my Asian embrace, although that chapter too is a past I've long since discarded. I have it on good authority. You've poked your nose into an elegant ruin or two. Yes? Just why would he tell me this? Like, why does it matter? Is he just probably bored or something? Then I expect you've heard of me. The old me. I'm at your service. Imagine a nation of unbridled prosperity. Oh, uh, oh. Every need met. Day after day of unbroken, unshakable peace. Existence fulfilled. And ripe for decay. You are a genius without peer, Amon. However do you conceive of such delightful experiments? That fool was beside himself with panic when he awoke with the head of a bull. <laughs> Even his cries for help emerged as so much guttural lowing. Uh, what? <laughs> the memory of it. <laughs> My poor sides. My friends and I were so consumed by laughter, we struggled to breathe. So he was... making, like, sick experiments for the Alligans before, so... No more than entertainment for bored wastrels ignorant of its worth. My all-consuming work. But it was not their only indulgence. Oh, were they like misusing what he created? He he didn't like intentionally. They were ever hungry for stimulation, slaves to the slightest hint, and amusement was afoot. Our nation was ailing, but I would see the poison purged. I resurrected a legend, our first and greatest emperor. And just as I had planned, he set our wayward empire back on the path of conquest. An inexhaustible ambition carried us onwards, always onwards. Yeah, remember? Yet, he who delivered to us such glory was not to be satisfied. Heed me, Armon. No matter how vast one's empire, 
or for one's treasure vault. All is rendered meaningless by death. In the end, all is lost. You know as well as I that the Emperor stands to lose this war. And so I have come to claim you. Hmm. For while your methods leave something to be desired, we cannot deny the results of your work. <laughs> and as fortune would have it, the seat of Van Daniel, your rightful seat, lies vacant and waiting. Take your place amongst your peers, rather than die a pointless death amidst the ashes of your doomed nation. Hmm. Send one of your clones to the Crystal Tower that you might see for yourself. See what lies ahead. The fall of the Empire affirmed the truth, majestic and tragic, as the Emperor foresaw. Scheme as you like, build as you will, nothing endures. What is life but a brief jaunt ending in emptiness? Nothing lasts. Hope fades. He left so me easily so distracted. Why? Okay. I almost, I almost left, left without, without saying, saying farewell. farewell. As for your friend, you need not worry. These pawns are far more useful to me alive as fuel for the primals. Uh, uh, uh. If you attempt to pull them free, they will die. So, enjoy tackling that conundrum with your comrades. We shall meet again! Not in one of these mind spires. Oh, no. no. But somewhere, but somewhere more, more suitably, suitably grandiose. grandiose. Your, Your favorite, favorite playmate, playmate is ever so eager to see. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Not him. So, this is really. It's super creepy. To see her like just completely motionless there. We don't know how conscious they are when they're like, I don't know what's going on for her. Hmm. Like, so based on what I just heard from Fan Daniel. He became nihilistic because he saw that basically everything, death like annihilates everything that you did in your life. Like, nothing lasts. And, but the thing is, I don't feel like really different towards him after that. Like, I guess it, it gives you more reason to understand why he's nihilistic, but I definitely don't feel any sympathy for him at all. Like, I don't think that was the point. I don't think it was trying to get me to feel sympathy, but I understand why, it need, why I needed to be there. 
Yeah. There's just so much we don't know. There's still so much we don't know. Please return to the great work. Okay. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta save her. We gotta rescue her. We gotta go to the Tower of Zot right now. They were probably expecting me to be able to protect her. Nadana. Can you answer me this? No, Nadana is trapped in the tower. She's still alive, yes? Yes. Then. And we must make warding scales, as many as we can. The prototype works perfectly. This, Nadana proved at peril to herself. So let us make more scales that she and all those who were taken might be saved. As alchemists, this is how we will help win the fight. Yeah. The satrap has been made aware of the tragedy. He offers his heartfelt condolences and reiterates his pledge to provide you with all that you require. To that end, he bade me to give you this link pearl that he might personally discuss the production of the warding scales with you. Okay, that's good. Surprised I didn't have one of those already. <laughs> As for our Aorzen visitors, I bear an invitation and her report. Mistress Nadana noted your vital contributions to the talisman's creation. This fact has come to the satrap's attention and in recognition of your deeds, he wishes to meet you. In addition to thanking you in person, he would also discuss further avenues of collaboration. So, if it's agreeable, will you not accompany me to Razat Han for an audience with His Excellency? It's past time we went to Razat Han. We gotta go and figure out what to do. Then it's settled. Please come to the gates. Okay. Here we go, Razat Han! Let's see it. A vast rock squats upon Favne, and to its stony surface clings the city of Rods at Han. <sighs> Ye who enter here are subject to the scrutiny of gods, the gate's most watchful eye. The orb which beholdeth the truth of all things. The all seeing eye? Illuminati? Eye? Pass beneath its hot and piercing gaze, bearing down like a second midday sun. The fragrant haze, a mixture of sweet incense and acrid smoke. The cries of merchants mingled here with lively melodies accented by dancers' feet. Travelers seduced by vivid sound and colors were once swallowed up by patchwork streets. But now not, because no one wants to come here and get abducted and put in the tower. But no such scenes to savor now. To what somber present does that divine eye bear witness? It's pretty, from what I can tell so far. I want to run around in it, of course. Here we are, Megadota. Colors. It seems a shame to bring you here directly. Under normal circumstances, it would have been my pleasure to show you the sights. And it would have been our pleasure to see them. Alas, it seems our tour of the city will have to wait. 
I'm afraid so. Come, we should head inside. Yeah. We gotta. I wonder what the what the ruler is like. Because we heard a kind of a sus thing about the previous errand boy. Like, we don't, no one knows where he is. Your Excellency, may I present our honored visitors? Ah, splendid. Most <laughs> splendid. <laughs> it's all raw male face for. It's all raw male face for. Okay. Okay. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ahawan, satrap of Radzatan. Okay. Hey. Our alchemists tell me your assistance was invaluable in the creation of the warding scale. Um, yeah, I helped. Such deeds ought to be recognized in person. Thus did I have young Varshan convey you here forthwith. On behalf of my people, may I express to you our sincere gratitude. Uh... You're welcome. No way, Tasha Um. But Nidana, she was taken. A regrettable incident indeed. Her colleagues insist that we honor her wishes and trust in the talisman, that it will be instrumental in saving Nidana and the others. I am eager to hear your opinion on the matter, so let us not stand on ceremony. Come, sit. Okay. I think not. Oh? Oh? This charade has gone on long enough. Show yourself. It's not really? <gasps> Forgive me, but were you expecting musicians, perhaps? There are no performers waiting in the wings at present, but arrangements could be made if you'd prefer. Nay, he hath the right of it. The time for artifice is past. Raise the curtain. What? As you wish. What? You travel as assistants to the students of Valdesian, but you are known to me. Even here have we heard of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. What? I am Vritra, and for years uncounted have this isle served as mine abode. Wow, that's awesome looking dragon. Awesome design, holy crap. Vitra of the first brood, sibling to Hreisvelga and Nidhogg. Vitra. I, mine elder brothers, of Midgard's son once born, I was last to hatch. Well, isn't this a surprise? We were told Rods at Han had an alliance with the dragon. Not that a great worm sat in the Sartrap's own hall. A necessary subterfuge, as the true tale of our nation history illustrates most effectively. Okay, why? In the beginning, the rock upon which our city is built was home to Vitra, and Vitra alone. In time, the ancestors of the Matanga came to the island and established a foothold. But never did they dare disturb the worm's lair. Next to arrive with the Aura, adopting the example of the Akasodra allies, they too treated Vitra with reverence and respect. Mm -hmm, okay. And for many years, an understanding between our forefathers and the great worm endured. 
Uh, okay, so all was good then. Until the hires. Marauding hears from the mainland came. Hears. Threatening to shatter our peace and tranquility. When it seemed all would be drowned in blood, Vitra himself came forth and quelled the rising conflict. A peaceful accord was reached, and old sworn in Vitra's name. Thus begun the dragon's governance of the fledgling state, which was to grow into Rad's Adha. So, I mean, they kind of told us that the guy, like, it wasn't a complete lie. Like, they did tell us that the satrap has access to uh, freely given dragon scales. So, like, I had a feeling there was a dragon around, uh, but I definitely didn't expect it, like, just sitting there right behind the garden, like, living here. It seems really uncomfortable. Does he just sit there all day? Like, what? But if Retra is still here, then your position as Sartrap is just... It's just... So... Vritra is actually running the show, and Satrap is just like... a mouthpiece? A charade, yes. And one which my family has performed faithfully for generations. But, um... Where do people think that you're getting dragon scales from? Like... Many envy the great worms their power. Were it known that I ruled here, then the fires of war would burn without end. I see, okay. So they just, there's like a legend that Satrop has a dragon buddy, but no one thinks that it's actually Vritra here. Like, how the hell would you keep this a secret? He's a big ass dragon, like, just behind a curtain, like, can't somebody walk in here and, like, hear giant <laughs> breaths? Like, I don't know how you would hide this, but they did it. I would not be the flame which consumeth my people. Those few who join me in laying our country's foundations were, perforce, sworn to secrecy. Right. Your eye. It was taken. Oh no. Oh no, not this, not this again. Shit. Oh God. Tis here, buried within the semblance of flesh. Oh, I knew this little kid was sus. Oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew he had some kind of weird crap go. Yeah. The body before thee is but a simulacrum constructed oh, by the I knew it. artisans of Razatan. With my oh, eyes. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. it. Serve as an oh. vessel for my wind. I knew that he was sus from the beginning, man. I said he's a creepy little kid. And then those people, I felt like, well, I'm being mean, okay? It's just a little kid after all. It's just a little kid. I'm being rude and mean. Like, he's just trying to help. Everybody likes him. So, like, I need to quit it. Not even really a little kid at all. <sighs> that would explain why I felt the presence <laughs> of a dragon upon our first meeting. Uh, that would explain why I felt, yes, that would explain that. Mm -hmm. I am woven with wards fashion to deceive such arcane senses. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I knew it. Though twas short-lived. It seemeth thy fusion with my brother hath left thee much altered, Estinian one blood. Yes. From the very first, we sensed the nature of one another, 
yet did neither one of us bear his fangs. That is all I need know of thee for now. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. That's pretty cool. With my secret thus revealed, I have for you a proposal. Not as a worm of the first brood, but as the ruler of Rats and Ah, uh, okay. With all haste must we take in hand the finished talismans and breach this foul spire. Thence, should it lay within our power to spell its wicked influence. Yet even with the assurance of the warding scales, the narrow confines of the tower doth limit the size of our force. Mm -hmm. And thus denied strength in numbers, thou must choose thy soldiers with care. Just so. Yet though our radiant host is formidable, I see a sure path before me. Thou and thy comrades have contended with a multitude of primal beings. Most recently, thou didst cast down false gods in Padalthan and Kartanau, I am told. <clears throat> That's right. In Pagolthon, we were dealing with the other tower. Tis upon that strength I would call. The scions have proven themselves the most capable, and I ask that you serve as the tip of our spear. So I guess... He's more like Grace Filger, like more, <laughs> well, obviously. Talismans would, of course, be provided for each of thy companions. And should you agree to this undertaking, more will be provided to make use of as you see fit. There's no denying it's a dangerous proposition, but the rewards may far outweigh the risk. Just think of what we might accomplish if we could equip all our allies with warding scales. I don't see an alternative. Like, I can't go in there by myself. Well, maybe I could, but it seems like not a good idea. I worry, however, that even the four of us may be too few for what you have in mind. Might we regroup with our friends first to discuss the matter? I feel like... It's going to be really helpful to have Virtra here as an ally to help us figure out what to do because he's like ancient wise entity and that's the kind of perspective that we need right now. Tis no trifling task that I have laid before you. Go, steal your hearts and hone your plans. Such time as you require shall be spent in crafting your protective charms. It seems a quick trip back to Charlian is in order. Yeah. Will thou not lend thine aid? Are you leaving without... Whether your request be made as a great worm or the ruler of Rods at Han, I see no reason to refuse, nor will I. I am in thy debt. Hmm. He 
just, he likes to get to business. That's why he left first. He's like, okay, now I see what you're getting. We're going. Okay, bye. He doesn't need to stick around for pleasantries. That meeting took a rather unexpected turn, but we now have a clear objective ahead of us. Let us rejoin our comrades in Charlie and muster a suitable crew for our foray into the Tower of Zot. Indeed. Be sure to attune to the ETH right here before departing. Yeah, I will do that. That was awesome. That was probably one of the best cut scenes I've seen so far, meeting Virtra. Virtra seems like a super interesting character and I can't wait to see all the interactions that Virtra has with Estenian. Like that was something that's really interesting me about interesting to me about Estenian. Okay, this is a it's gonna be very hard to go this way. Okay, I, I, there's no need. We're going we're going back to Charlie. Well, it's expense. I hope I can afford it. Anyway, one thing I really like it, that I find interesting about Estenian as a character is to see his... how much he has really been altered by Nidhogg's ether. There is, like, a lot of Nidhogg's essence that's remained with him. And so, in a way, he's, like, the representative for Nidhogg. Okay, back to the annex. Oh boy. Wow, here we go, here we go. Mm -hmm. Just as I was getting used to balmy Favnir, we're back in chilly Charlian. Take care not to catch your death. We need you for the battles to come. Now then. Your investigation here remains, but when that's over, we can take stock of all the developments and discoveries. Yeah, we need to talk about Fan Daniel. We need to talk about Vutra. The conflict between Nidhogg and I is in the past, and though they were brothers, it has no bearing on my view of Vutra. Above all else, he is a leader of men, not an enemy. He would hardly dedicate his life to this endeavor if he bore our kind any ill will. Well, obviously, yeah. He's not. He's more... He's He clearly cares more about the fate of men than either Nidhogg or Gracefelder. He dedicated his whole life to helping out. Well, maybe it's just he really didn't want to leave his house. Like, he found a big rock that he really, really liked, and he did not want to get out of it. And if it meant that he has to, like, get along, like, force all the men to get along to make that happen, then okay. Okay. We gotta go find, uh, Kryle and let her know that everything is ruined. Um... I did not do a good job of protecting Nidana. Also, uh, Fan Daniel told me his life story and I still don't like him. <laughs> My directions were easy enough to follow, I hope. In any case, you stand now before the doors of Numenon. Charlene's grandest collections of books and homes. Crow, we can't talk about this right now. The archives of Numenon extend deep beneath the surface like the roots of a tree. The vast halls of the Great Google Library pale in comparison to Numenon's endless maze of subterranean chambers. Any citizen of Shalian is free to enter and peruse, peruse its shelves. Well, most of its shelves, only Archons are afforded access to certain restricted vaults. I have dispatched Ishtola and Raha to investigate those. Interesting how she says Ishtola and Raha. So, is she more, is she more like, buddy-buddy with Raha, that she can drop the G, and less so with, is it snowing? Oh my god, it's snowing here, what? Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alice and Alphino will help me continue my search through the stacks open to the general public. Okay. Okay. Your status pre presents more of a problem. Kyle, we cannot talk about any of this stuff right now. Somebody got kidnapped. It's a non-citizen. <laughs> You're only permitted to browse the first floor here at the entrance. Even so, 
There should be a number of books which touch upon Charlene's history of foreign policy. Your task will be to find and study the relevant publication. I promise you, a working knowledge of those subjects will make it far easier to spot the sort of clues we're looking for. Let us be about it, shall we? I've told the others to meet us at the stone benches over there once they found some promising tomes. Oh, I understand what's happened. Now I get it. It's... It feels a little bit... Unnatural, though, because... Like, basically, you get to Charlian, and then you can choose. Do you want to do the Charlian story where you investigate and you find clues to help us? Or do you want to do the Thavnir story? I did the Thavnir story first. And having done the Thavnir story, it ends with, like, this really critical moment where Nidana has just been captured. And she's in danger. And it's really urgent that we go back and save her right right now. So we all reconvene here. And they're like, go find Kryle. And I'm like, okay. But we have to wait to talk about Nidana until after we do this part of the quest. Because some people might have picked this part of the quest first. And it feels a little bit, um, a little bit disjointed because of that. So, because I'm, we're like, we're talking about books. We're like, I come here, I'm like, oh my God. The first thing I'm thinking is, Kral, we need to talk. Nadana's been captured. We need to go right now. Oh my God. And she's, we're talking about like, oh, you're not allowed to go into the bottom floor of the library because you're not. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> what do you mean? This is no time for talking about this. So it's, it's a, it's a little odd, but um, I, I get why it was, why it's like that. Now I've, it's like finally dawned on me. What am I gonna tell the others? Like, hey, um, I found out that Charlian is pacifist. Um, and that it has a, uh, the forum leading it. And, uh, that's really helpful, right? <laughs> Basic Charlian history. I'm now aware of it, so um, I'm ready to help. Were you waiting long? Um, no, it's just snowing. <coughs> I wanted to make sure I'd borrowed at least a few promising volumes. Alfie and Kryle should be along shortly. Great. I was delayed in a similar fashion as far as I could see. No titles in the Archon stacks mention the final days specifically, so we have no choice but to start with the tangentially relevant tomes, if they are even that. At present, the plan is to skim through as quickly as we dare and share our discoveries as we make them. It would have been nice to invite everyone to the estate. Plenty of comfortable places to read. Ready supply of hot tea. Oh, I was always quite fond of reading outside. But it's not about the little pleasures, is it? You miss your home. It's been difficult. After our arrival, we managed to speak with one of the family servants and ask how things were. It seems our dear father has instructed the staff that even if Alfie and I were to return to Charlian, we were not to be allowed to cross the threshold. Wow. A harsh measure indeed. I hope that our efforts <clears throat> to understand his position and that of the forum will perhaps lead to a reconciliation. No! No. No. Because uh, what he did is really messed up, and uh, he needs to apologize, okay? He needs to apologize first. We'll mend this rift one day. I'm certain of it. What have you, Graha? Have you been to visit your family? Or do they not live here in this city? Uh, well, my situation is also somewhat complicated. I was raised in Charlie and S, but I was born rather further away. 
In the southern reaches of Ilsevard, in fact, for generations my people have dwelt in Corvos, the coastal region opposite the island of Thavnair. The Allegans founded a city in that fertile land, and by ship brought, it, brought in the subjugated tribes of the Mikote to serve as laborers. Of course, the massive earthquakes of the fourth Earth umbral calamity brought an end to the empire's reign. And when the fifth calamity froze the seas solid, many of the tribes still living in Corvos braved the journey back to Eorzea. My ancestors, however, chose to remain that they might prevent the remnants of Allegan technology from being misused. Isn't Corvos under Garlean rule? For the past 50 years, yes, some semblance of local culture remains, as is the case for most imperial provinces, but Garlemald renamed the region Locus Amonis. When I was a boy, I remember that from the Reaper questline. A nearby town came under the jurisdiction of an illustrious imperial family, the nobles of House Darnus. House Darnus demonstrated a singular interest in elegant civilization, and so my tribe was forced to consider a plan of action. For some time already, voices have been raised in favor of abandoning our ancient customs. After all, the Allegan I no longer passed to our eldest children as reliably as it once had. Mm. Fear of discovery eventually tipped the scales, and the decision was made to bury our ties to the knowledge and traditions of Alag. As the last child born with the elegant eye, I was given over to the custody of friends and the students of Valdesian, who had me registered as a Charlian citizen. I never even considered. <clears throat> Forgive me, it was an unkind question. Even Thancred was taken in by Archon Louisois, was he not? Stories of adopted waifs and rescued orphans are more common among Charlians than you might think. <clears throat> Yet regardless of our origins, we're all provided with an equal opportunity to learn, and with sufficient perspicacity, we outsiders can even learn the vaunted title of Archon. Wait, so are you telling me? They gave him away because they didn't want anything to do with the Allegan stuff anymore? So they just gave him away as like a like a research project. Oh my god. Oh man. They gave away a little baby. Rahabu. Oh my god, I don't do that right now. <laughs> this is exactly why I have such a love for this country and why I wish to remain a nation of which its citizens can be proud. Here, here, another good reason to get to the bottom of the farm's stubbornness, aside from the trifling matter of our impending doom. Excuse us while we try to make some headway into these books, Zeppla. More company should be arriving any moment now. Not returned since Master Gala first brought me here. I can tell you that Corvosi rebels still seek to slip the yoke of their imperial masters, though the fighting is far less fierce than it once was. Oh, and they have carpets, flying carpets. Their legends are quite extraordinary. Um, I I have that. I got it from the Mog Station. <laughs> it was like fifteen dollars, I think. Yeah. We return with our selections. Although I must say, the pickings were quite slim indeed. Mistress Cryl has already flicked through every history book devoted to disasters, and more than a few which barely made mention of them. 
As such, we'll be looking to research papers on the umbral calamities as well as articles written by prominent forum members. Perhaps their knowledge of the final days comes from an unexpected source. Mm, true. Speaking of which, might I ask you a few questions related to the final days? I'm the only one here who didn't witness the events of Amarat firsthand. And here I may be overlooking critical details. Well, we can go to run the dungeon right now if you want to crawl. <laughs> My thanks. Now, where do we get? What kind of phenomena did the ancients encounter at the fi as the final days drew nigh? Um, fire, um, evil caterpillars, um, evil pigeons, um, tentacle monsters. Complete destabilization of creation magics. The unfolding catastrophe wrought havoc on all manner of life. The chaos extended to the ancients themselves, causing their powers of creation to spiral out of control. Fear and despair manifested in terrible, tangible fashion. Meteors raining from the sky, fire erupting from the ground, indescribable abominations prowling the streets. That more or less aligns with my understanding. If only the arts of creation had survived until the present day, we might have had something substantial to analyze. Well, I think that what the pixies are doing is creation magic. Like the way that we were able to create Angelo, that seems like creation magic to me. To the best of our knowledge, however, those techniques were not preserved or passed on. Ishtola surmises that the closest known magic is that of the summoning rituals promulgated by the Athens. Was there aught else of note which heralded the approach of the final days? <clears throat> they say it began with a keening sound from the land itself. Yes, the Amaratines spoke of it, didn't they? We never did hear this sound ourselves, of course, thrust as we were into the midst of the madness. But it seems that each and every one of the catastrophes was preceded by this ominous noise. Eventually it resounded all across the star, and not even Amarat was spared. The sound. Yeah, I remember the Amaratians talking about it. <clears throat> so the ground was crying out, you say, to be considered the harbinger of doom. It must have been quite distinctive, and probably quite loud. Yes. What is the sound? How does it relate to the echo? That's my question. I'll have to speak with one of the Numenon's mammoths and ask after any books which made mention of such a sound. Last but not least, would you describe how the ancients sought to quell this unprecedented calamity? What definitive action did they take? Well, I summoned Highland in Zodiac. Summoned Zodiac. Um, they summoned a zodiac. Yes, with Elidibus serving as his heart. Is this a pop quiz? <laughs> like, is this a quiz? Somebody gave themselves in sacrifice to bring him into being. We do not know exactly how Zodiac brought salvation to the star, only that by his godlike will were the laws of nature set aright. Yeah, I mean, he fixed it. The problem was that he needed sacrifices. That was the issue. So... Then, once the balance was redressed, the ancients offered up a further sacrifice to heal the ravages of the final days. Lives sprouted anew, and it was these fledgling souls they intended to render under Zodiac a trade that would have allowed them to resurrect the shades of loved ones absorbed by the primal. Or might have. 
had Vinat and her fellows not manifested the opposition in the form of Heidelin. Thank you, both of you, for the detailed review. I feel much more confident now in my understanding of events. Um, I feel like, yeah, this is a this is a scene that's been put in here to remind people who maybe didn't, like, maybe there's people who took a long break between playing Shadowbringers and playing Inwalker, and this is like a, a recap. With all that freshly in mind, it does make me wonder what the Telophroi truly mean when they speak of bringing back the final days, what we've seen We've seen what they're doing with those towers of theirs. Is forcing people to summon primals a kind of catalyst? Are they attempting to mirror the conditions caused by unstable creation magics? That's the, that is a very good question. I don't know. This is the real question. Or are they simply using the final days as a figure of speech, a convenient metaphor for the scale of destruction they plan to unleash? I don't know. But this is all just pointless conjecture at this stage. Let us return our attention to the forum. We should keep an eye out for Ishtola, but it's time we begin studying these research papers. I'm the last, am I? Well, my extended search of the Archon stacks produced one or two possibly useful books, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. If you recall, Orion J learned of the source's reflections from the Jaren Oracles for its potential to cause panic and confusion, that tome was deemed apocrypha and sealed away in the Great Google Library. Would people panic if they all knew that they had reflections of themselves on other worlds? <clears throat> Tis even less likely that knowledge of this unsundered world, not to mention the horrors of the final days, would be left sitting on a shelf for any curious scholar to find. It stands to reason then that my colleagues, be they archons or counselors, should perforce be largely ignorant of the subject. Yet, when you confronted Master Fortuno with the knowledge of the Telofroy and their machinations... Oh, Nora, you want to get up? Okay. Okay. You trying to scoot out? He scoffed at the suggestion that they posed a threat. He seemed adamant that the forum would know if the final days were truly upon us. <clears throat> oh, I see what's happening now. So now this is a recap of what happened with Master Farge, you know? Yeah. He thought, it's not really the final days, y'all are full of crap, I would, we would know about it if it was really the final days. Yeah, okay, I remember, I remember now. Which only supports the conclusion that whatever privileged wisdom is guiding the forum's behavior is being kept secret from the rest of the nation. Yes. He had some reason to be confident. Not that I mean to excuse myself from reading duty, whether they contain mention of the final days or no, these books could yet hold something of value. You weren't thinking of leaving, were you? There's plenty of work for everyone. Well, actually, Ishala, I was thinking about rescuing someone who was just kidnapped in the Tower of Zod. Like, we need to go deal with that right now. Ready for a tea break, Zabala? I know I am. Honestly, my neck and shoulders are gonna calcify. I don't stretch my legs and walk around for a bit. You know the last stand down in the harbor, don't you? Yes, the cafe. Come and meet me near the outside tables. Okay. As busy as ever, I see how very shyly in that no other gourmet cafe has sprung up to compete for customers. This crowd gives me an idea. Before we place an order, why don't we ask a few questions and gauge the mood of the city? I'm interested to hear what the average citizen has to say about the Talal Roy. We might earn something new. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's ask. What is it? Can a man not enjoy a moment of private respite? If you're looking to share a table, then I respectfully request that you look elsewhere. Wow, rude. You misunderstand, sir. We're simply wondering if you knew of the Tolofroy, those enemies of peace, have promised an end to all we hold dear. You're that house of levy, girl, aren't you? 
And this woman with you is obviously a foreigner. Hmm. I'd heard you were disowned for helping outsiders indulge their barbaric whims, and here you are, giving truth to the rumor. Well, it doesn't help I'm standing here with a giant sign. <laughs> I'll thank you to leave me be. I have not to say to the likes of you. Well, I must apologize. It was foolish of me to expect an ounce of civility from one so enlightened. <laughs> nice. Come, Zeppelin. No problem. Screw that guy. Okay. Yes, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Pray excuse the interruption. We were hoping we you might share your thoughts on the Telofroy and their unconscionable plans. My goodness, if it isn't the young Miss Levier. My apologies, but I work in the offices of the forum, and if word reached Master Fortuna that I was helping you... <sighs> wow, Alice, your reputation is so bad here. Maybe you should go away. I'm like, I'll handle this. <laughs> what about Dickon? We'll see how Dickon is. See how he acts. Welcome, madam. What can I offer you today? Wait, is that Mistress Alice I see there? My word, how long has it been? Oh, that's your friend. Okay, we're good. Far too long. Meet Dickon, the owner of The Last Stand. I used to frequent his cafe on occasion, in between lessons at the studio. That seems like an age ago now. I remember hearing that you and Master Alfano had set sail for Eorzea, but then you never came back. Lately, there's been gossip about your father disowning the pair of you. Everything all right at home? You know the answer to that. It's complicated. I hadn't expected complete strangers to be so familiar with our situation quite so quickly. Everyone has an opinion, it seems. Tell me about it, Alice. Say everybody's got their opinion that they want to tell you, they want to share with you. Well, it is house of a year. No matter how discreet Master Fashion may have been, news of your family's doings never stay secret for long. Things being what they are, what brings you back to the city now of all times? We have questions, and only Charlie has the answers. Tell me, Master Dickon, have you heard anything about an apocalypse called the final days? I doubt, he di I doubt it. What, like the end of the world? Nothing like that, I'm afraid. That's what you're here to find? Information on this apocalypse? Yes, whatever we can learn. Unfortunately, your patrons appear to be unwilling to speak with me. I wish there was more I could do to help. Hmm, maybe there is. You're a visitor to Charlian, aren't you? Then few will know your face. We should be able to pass you off as a server with none the wiser. We just finished preparing a few orders, strike up some friendly conversation while you're setting down the food, and you might just get the answers you're looking for. Yeah, that's what I said. I need to go off on my own. What do you think? No problem, I can do that. This is a tea set. It's a whole group. It's a group. Yeah. The Telofa who? Never heard of them. Or their final days. My friend Sonari are somewhat uninformed when it comes to current events. Now, if you want to hear about the ritual arcane practices of the 6th Astral Era... Wow, no. <laughs> that sounds boring. Uh, omelette, that's for you, Gisla. Finally, two, four, six, eight, let's dig in. No time to waste. I should probably eat soon. What? This is Roy. Oh, yes, I remember seeing the name in the latest Gazette. That and some grand claim about the end of day is the same old senseless warmongering. When will these fools grow tired of spilling each other's blood? It's so easy for you to say here. There's no towers in the distance kidnapping people. Best stay out of it, I say. This forum has made the right choice, and I fully support. Of course you do. Look what you look where you are. Like it's it seems like there's nothing wrong. It seems fine here. So I I mean why wouldn't you? What will you start? <laughs> Bane banter with a smile. No, uh, that's is that that's not what they ordered. 
Okay, I'll, I'll do this though, just to be, just to be a contrarian. Hey! You don't need to butter me up, you know. I've already ordered one of the most expensive things on the menu. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work. The lobster's mine. You have no idea how long I've scrimped and saved and suffered to avoid this heavenly dish. Um, the final days? This is the first time I've heard of it. Although that would explain why my friend has been rushed off his feet. It would must be a busy time to be a gleaner. Gleaner? What's that? You don't know what a gleaner is? They're collectors of a sort. Travel the world, procuring things that we haven't got here in Charlian. Priceless books, unusual live specimens, and so forth. So named for these folk who trail after the reapers in the fields. Picking up every grain which was missed. I, by all accounts, gleaning is a most meticulous and demanding profession. If these Falofroi make good on all their audacious threats, then many uncatalogued rarities could be lost forever. What else would the gleaners be? Why else would the gleaners be buzzing about in such a friendly frenzy? We need to find one of these people if they're actually worried about it. Watch the harbor and you'll see what I mean. They're carting loads in from the docks all day. It's never been this hectic before. Not like this. What? So there's some people that are taking it seriously enough to... Any trouble with the customers? Nope. One of them told me, like, more than anybody's told me so far. They seem unaware of the final days. Even Dickon had nothing to offer. If the forum does have secret knowledge, then they've done an impressive job of ensuring no one whispers it in the wrong ear. But what about the gleaners? Who are like running around in a frenzy. We need to go somewhere else. There's too many gossips here. Oh, how nice. Nice cutscene. Coffee with Alice. Ooh, cozy. You know when her father disowned us. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It's a nice coffee cup. I need a new coffee cup now. Or I need a sticker. Because it's kind of like mine. Well, this is, I don't put coffee in this, but like... I need like a Charlene sticker to put on here. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in. Yeah, that but... I began to feel the weight of what it meant. After your, after your anger fades... Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Yeah. Grahas said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark, and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy, to keep us at arm's length. Performance? Could it be that he actually did that to protect them from something else that's going on? Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been, how being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. I doubt it. No. Mm -hmm. 
Are those the people coming in from the docks, the gleaners? They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. <gasps> oh my god, it is. A vast oh. complex beneath the island. Oh my god, it is. They are they are actually preparing for the final days and they're getting all this stuff ready like, like they're, they're hauling in all of their uh, seeds their like heirloom seeds and all of their like food supply and they don't want to tell anybody because oh my god I bet that's it Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world well that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples <clears throat> that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library, comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Cool. That's awesome, actually. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. It's like, it's related to what the guy said at the coffee shop. Yeah, did you just realize what I realized, Alice? Didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and I going did. more than usual? Yeah. Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And Gleaners answer to the forum. Oh my god. That's what I said, girl. If I'm the appearance you. of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the forum is planning. You got it. Girl, you got it. Let's get on a boat. Let's row ourselves in there. Let's swim. Hell, I'm good. I, like, it's fine. We'll just we'll jump off and we'll <laughs> swim in there. That's really interesting. I loved that cutscene. It was so cozy and like, I, I really enjoyed it. Just to chat with, chat with my girl, favorite Scion, Alice. We should tell the others what we've learned about the Gleaners. That's what I said. Go on ahead to Numenon and I'll join you in a moment. Master Dickon will want his cups back. Yeah, I call. Welcome back, Zeppola. Been for a walk and cleared your head, have you? Not exactly. We did some impromptu investigating and turned up information on the gleaners. It makes sense. The gleaners take their requests directly from institutions and bureaucrats, but as you say, they ultimately answer to the forum. A sudden and significant increase in gleaner traffic and in cargo, it certainly gives the impression of an overarching plan being put into motion. Let us see what theory we can build from the facts. As Ishtola observed earlier, Numenon's archives appear to contain no information concerning the final days. Coupled with what Zeppelin and Alice learned at the last stand, we can be reasonably sure that most Charlians know nothing of that particular period of ancient history. Yet, my father and his colleagues are not only familiar with the final days, but are also somehow certain that the destruction being perpetrated by the Telophoroi is wholly unlike these apocalyptic events. Moreover, the forum claims to be so occupied by a duty of such pressing importance that they saw fit to unanimously deny Eorzea's request for aid. And now the Gleaners, official agents of the state, have been mobilized on an unprecedented scale. It's becoming ominous. I do not think it a stretch to conclude that the Gleaners' recent activities are in service to the Forum's secret events. In which case, our next course of action seems obvious. We visit Labyrinthos and assess the situation for ourselves. And if we're lucky, the Gleaners will be far more receptive to our questions. 
<clears throat> what should we expect down there? I would hate to spoil the surprise. As for myself, there are a few more subjects that you'd like to research. I may join you later, but feel free to leave behind your borrowed books and be on your way. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> Let's go see it. Let's see the labyrinthos. So this is their doomsday bunker. Is that right? I'm pretty sure this is doomsday bunker. Don't answer that, by the way. I'm not looking at chat at all. Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves. And this vault's architects surely belonged to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. A simple solution at first, and then bit by bit, a profound transformation. Knowledge buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. <laughs> Such a great voice actor. you expected. I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. But I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. Hmm. The island is volcanic, you see. And once upon a time, this great hollow must have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 years ago at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh on no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Aren't those people gleaners? Aye, judging by their dress. They are said to work alone as a rule, but would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. Hmm. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Let's spread out and get some answers then. Okay. Did you call to me just now? Mm, nope. No? How odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. I I'll be fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we? Mm, did she hear a hide on? Maybe. A bunny boy. You're here to help or give me more headaches because you don't have the look of a gleaner and I'm in no mood for idle chatter. One of my colleagues was so exhausted he took a tumble and crashed into a pile of crates. Now I have a pack of marmots running loose. Didn't one of the gleaners you questioned say something about escaped marmots? Yes. Perhaps if you were to help him capture said creatures, he might be inclined towards a more friendly and enlightening conversation. I will turn my charms upon this gleaner here. Okay. Good plan. I'll do, I'll do little tasks. I'll do helpful little tasks. This will endear me to the people. You wish to help me find the marmots? I have nothing suitable to pay you for your services, but if you're offering out of the goodness of your heart, yeah. 
anything to help a fellow bud. Aaronville, friend, specialist in the collection of live specimens. That said, the capture of these Nagshin marmots is a trial I've no desire to repeat. Grizzled mice. For mercy, there are no other marmot species on this tier at present. So there should be no mistaking our little fugitives. Got all right, all right. Put them in the sack. Got it. What will this guy tell me now that I helped him with his rat catching? How did you fare? I got it. Thankfully, the marmots are unharmed. They've held up well in isolation, but it's much too soon to release them into the habitat. Thanks. Um. <laughs> what will you do with the marmots now? Are they safe? That's for the forum to decide. They're the guiding authority behind Labyrinthos after all, and this job was what one small part of this great inventory of theirs, suitable for consumption and easy to breed. Those were the two conditions I was given for the stock I was instructed. <gasps> what? They're gonna, you're gonna eat them? You're gonna eat them? But also, it's, they're, they are stocking out for the apocalypse. Yeah, they are. I don't know what the forum has planned for these creatures, but at the very least, I doubt they'll be served for dinner today or tomorrow. There you are, Zeppola. Hey. Is this the gleaner you mentioned? Yeah. I thought this was a sanctuary. I thought this was a marmot sanctuary. But then you're gonna eat it. I'm Kral, the students of Adesia, and these others are my associates. Truth be told, the forum's decisions of late have not sat entirely well with us. That's why we made the descent into Labyrinthos. We hope that by seeing those decisions put into action, we might more fully understand their reasoning. Yes, wise and practical never hurts to try and gain a broader perspective, does it? Anyway, duty calls. Other animals to capture in enclosures is empty. Once again, I'm sorry, I can't offer you more for your services. It's okay. You gave me information that we needed. So, yes. So we've confirmed that the order for this ambitious operation did indeed come directly from the forum. However, the gleaners have not been informed of its purpose. I'd say that fits with everything we've heard thus far. We also discovered when the operation was begun, the forum contacted the Gleaners Guildship and put their people to this great work some four days after the Talafroy made their chilling declaration. Oh my god. As seasoned travelers, the Gleaners keep abreast of news from every corner of the world out of necessity. Thus am I inclined to trust that their calendar of events is accurate. Altogether, it gives the distinct impression that this undertaking was a sudden and unexpected development, yet I find it hard to believe that such comprehensive restructuring of Labyrinthos and its archives could have been planned in so brief a window. Nay, this plan was long in the making. They were but awaiting the right time to put it into effect. And the Tolofroy's declaration was what set it all in motion? Oh no. They know more than that. Oh, they know more than that. It seems likely, but let's not leap to conclusions just yet. Okay. For the moment, I suggest we conduct a wider investigation of Labyrinthos. The more facilities we visit, the more pieces of the puzzle we stand to find. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna jump to conclusions or anything, but in that case, how about we head to the Archeon? From there, we can reach the lo Oh no, Kyle! Oh no. I'm fine. Truly, the sudden descent has left me with a bit of a headache. Nothing that will stop me from soldiering on. 
at least allow me to take the lead. I'm fairly certain I remember the way to the Archeon. In Final Fantasy XIV, no one just has a headache. Okay, like, there, no one has a normal headache. That's, that never happens. You have, you usually have, like, God talking to you, or you have, uh, someone from another dimension talking to you. Another world, like, it's not good if somebody does that. Or you're having a flashback, like... Don't worry about me, I'm hale and healthy. In fact, I'm beginning to suspect that dot dot dot. Nay, let's discuss this later. What? Okay, so she knows what's going on and it's not that she's sick. Anyway, behold the Archeon. As Numenon serves as Charlene's literary archive, so does this structure house the city's wealth of material data. The architecture too is similar. The building you see is merely the upper entrance, an access point to the vaults carved into the cliffside itself. We're here to peruse the Archeon's vaults. Peruse? You're clearly not gleaners then. Might I ask your affiliation? We belong to the students of Valdesian, but is that relevant? I was given to believe that the vaults, those open to the public at least, were open to the public. Ordinarily, yes, that would be the case. At present, however, access is restricted. Only persons directly involved in the reorganization efforts are permitted to enter. Not us, then. I suppose we had better move along to another facility. This building has a lift which connects to the middle tier, yes? Might we at least make use of that? That service has also been suspended, I'm afraid. For the time being, priority has been given over to the conveyance of inventory. Wait. Wait, so this is as far as we can go? I apologize for the inconvenience. Please come again after restructuring operation is concluded. By that time, it'll be too late. We're so close to getting answers. We need to rethink our approach. Let's step outside for a moment. Yes. Mm. Students of Baldessian. <laughs> so, um, we are at an impasse. We have no other leads. I should like to pursue this one further. But I doubt that our stone-faced custodian will be swayed by a heartfelt plea. So we must seek another means to access the lower levels. It says likely that the people in this area are involved in the structuring in one way or another. If we were to ingratiate ourselves, that might allow us to accompany them on the lift. Hey, buddy. What's that? Take you down on the lift with me? Sorry, but not a chance. I've been up and down all day and only now have I finally found a spare moment to rest. I did see a gleaner fellow heading out, heading out the main gate there though, shouldering a large pack, engaged in some manner of task. Maybe he'll be headed down below after he's done with whatever it is he's doing. Oh, it's our friend. Quiet, you'll frighten it away. What now? Oh, it's you again. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm in the middle of another task. The cloud can I need a chapter. Capture is close, very close. Oh, let me get it. Two hunters is better than one. <clears throat> the canal here is a common gathering spot for birds of all kinds, but the one I'm after today is the hornbill. Its feathers are green, its cry a distinctive call. Single it out and shoot it with Oh, it's a dart quest. It's a dart quest, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. It's a dart. Um. Green. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> That's like, oh, green? Got it. That was wrong. That was, it's not just any green bird. 
The green bird that calls. This one goes to whack. I forgot the whack one, not the call one. That one's Q in. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's, you also did the exact same thing. Okay, well, it's, I don't feel so bad. I wasn't alone. I'm like green. Headshot. Oh, sweet baby. Sleeps. Snoozing. A fair shot. <gasps> Voice actor, yes. Bunny boy. Nicely done. Let me trust this one up and I'll make my way over to you. Okay. Okay, I, I, I will wait here. There you are. Any new revelations? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, no. So you met with that gleaner again, this time to capture a hornbill. I understand catching and bringing in creatures from the outside, but what's the point of chasing after ones already here? Well, they said that there's more going out than coming in. So they're taking their stock and they're, they're shipping it, like, out um, for some really sketch reason. Oh, it's a simple thing, really. Occasionally, we remove specimens no longer needed for study, or those we've had difficulty raising. But we can't simply turn them loose. Safely returning such creatures to their native habitats is another facet of a cleaner's duties. Oh, that's, that's good. But not in this case, I'm afraid. Wait. I've been asked to bring the bird below. What? No, what, what do you mean? Below, what? Everyone knows what it means? the restricted section in the lower levels of Labyrinthos. Open only to a select few researchers hand-picked by the forum. Hmm. The projects down there are the subject of rumor and hearsay. Oh no, is it a torture? Forbidden magics. Advanced technologies that can Testing? never be allowed to fall into outside hands. Even Archons are not privy to the truth. Um... Okay. That's... Those who are, the researchers involved in this secretive work, are not permitted to walk freely in the city, and are instead required to live in isolated quarters. What could a facility subject to such strict security protocols possibly need with a hornbill? An... an experiment? I hope not. Possibly. I wasn't afforded an explanation. But judging by the requisition list given to me and my colleagues, I doubt it's for any kind of advanced research. I'd be more inclined to believe we were making preparations to migrate to the south. Maricidio, or thereabouts. Uh... What? Who's we? What? what? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Much of the flora and fauna we were asked to procure could serve as reliable sources of sustenance. They're comparatively hardy species, too able to endure harsh climates. 
and among them are specimens known to be effective in improving soil quality and purifying water. Oh my god. Do they want to terraform the moon? Are they trying to, trying to live to the moon? Go to the moon? When you put it that way, migration does sound like a Because the planet's going to get destroyed? That's all it is, though. An assumption. Through our tasks, we gleaners glimpse only bits and pieces of the forum's plans. Uh... Um... Our prime concern is that our requisitions, be they living or otherwise, are properly preserved for the knowledge of future generations. Um... Now, I really must be going. I regret that I cannot reward you as you deserve. Perhaps you might reward us after a fashion then. It is imperative that we reach the lower levels. Yeah. And seeing as you were already set to descend with your assigned cargo, mayhap we could accompany you as your assistants. Mm, yes. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Once the animals have been prepared for transport, we sent them down separately via the lift. I will, of course, follow after to make my report, but I can hardly pass you off as porters when there's nothing left to carry. True. Nice try. Indeed. Pray forget I said anything. Beautiful bye. How do you feel about climbing? If you've strength and the courage to brave it, then there is another way down. This path leads to the 33rd facet, a mine shaft excavated during one of our expansions of Labyrinthos. Mm. While I cannot guarantee that the passage is safe to traverse, it should provide access to the medial circuit below. Good I idea. I never even knew such a place existed. Thank you. This is the perfect solution. You're quite welcome. But consider yourselves warned. If the going proves too treacherous, you do well to turn back. I bid you good day. Well, best, uh, most helpful character we've met so far. Of course, Turning no surprise, it's enough, so a bun boy. We've come this far. Let's go and take a look at this mine shaft. Okay, let's take a look. Everyone seems to have made it through without incident. Nothing of consequence. It delivers to the medial circuit. This tier is where they keep a wide variety of samples for agricultural production. If Aaronville's assumption holds true that specimens are being collected in preparation for a great migration, then we should see evidence of such plans in the area's research projects. Let's follow the path to the nearest farming facility and see what we see. Mithril caps, some sort of research project, I wonder. I suppose they are a most unusual creature. Why did they develop such long limbs? <gasps> when all they do is shuffle about narrow tunnels because they've been spending time on the moon, sweetie. That's the only explanation. <laughs> okay, maybe. All right, maybe there's another explanation. <laughs> But, um, that's my theory. <laughs> that sound, that's what I would say to your shoulder to sound crazy. Carrots farm. Oh no, it's not carrots. It's grapes. Not carrots. This is Mariel or. Agronomics. Muriel. Labyrinthus is a host to a wide variety of vegetation which allows us to conduct studies on cultivation methods utilized in foreign lands. Is this facility which coordinates and oversees those efforts? The fruits of their research go to feed their Labyrinthus colleagues, or so I hear. More notable successes might make it to the Agora. 
food's so exotic, you'd be hard pressed to guess their origin, let alone how they might taste. Indeed, mystery vegetables without a name, only a list of nutritional benefits scribbled on a card. Hmm, I see no gleaners hereabouts, yet these workers seem to share that same sense of urgency. Tis possible they know something of the forum's plans and their underlying motivations worth looking into, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta ask. We gotta ask around. Currently, I have a theory, and I, by the way, I'm not looking at chat much here today, uh, but right now I have a theory. That theory is that the Charlians have a doomsday bunker, or they're building a doomsday bunker on the moon, because they believe that, yes, the planet is going to be destroyed, and... They only care about saving themselves. And I also think that Alphino and Alice's dad staged this whole performance where he um, put, like, basically disowned them. I think he staged all of this to protect them, actually. I think that he knows something that's so messed up that it would actually maybe in some way justify or seem to justify such an extreme course of action. I think he didn't really mean it, but he said it because he needs to protect them from whatever thing that he knows. Also, I think that uh, he plans to get them, handle all this stuff. Basically, I think that he didn't want them poking around in Charlian. He didn't want them uh, to find out what's really going on because he knows they would blab it to everybody else and that would be a problem. Uh, so I think that he's going to set up his doomsday bunker with his fellow Illuminati and at the very last minute, he's going to swoop up his children and like, they'll be safe from the end of the world. Uh, that's my current theory. I'm not looking at chat at all. <laughs> so. That's just, I wanted to get all that out there now. And uh, now we are going to see if maybe I can uncover some of the truth about this, I assume, doomsday bunker that the Charlians are building. Charlian elite are building, rather. Not just anybody, but because most Charlians don't even know what's going on. And most of them are probably uh, in the dark. Hello there. We were not expecting visitors, not with the use of the lift being restricted. How did you make it down here? Am I really gonna say? <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. The mine shaft. Under normal circumstances, I would reward such tenacity with a guided tour of the fields, but I'm afraid the form is, is filling order lists a mom long. Massive yet detailed requests, literal wagon loads of crop samples, and hardly any time to put them together. When I first heard of this grand reorganization, I assumed we would be shuffling around old stock to make room for the new. Then came in the orders for ridiculous quantities of seeds we've already thoroughly researched. That's right. They've thoroughly researched it and its capacity to withstand the moon. The moon environment. They're going to terraform it. Passing strange, eh? I pressed for an explanation and was met with vague assurances that all would be revealed in due course. Okay. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna check it out. Ooh. Ooh, pretty. This pretty flower is, is for me. Hard to look away, isn't it? Who's that? But they're more than pretty flowers. Heart blooms are attuned to ambient emotion. What? Ambient emotions? <sighs> 
You don't seem convinced, but believe me, it's true. This ashen grey, for instance, it mirrors the anxiety and urgency of those working nearby as they rush to fulfill sudden orders. Oh, it's like a mood ring, but it's a flower. Intense feelings like those spur the petals to change colour. Bright glowing hues in the presence of joy, dark subdued shades for frustration or despair. Yet even with the collected wisdom of Charlian at our disposal, we've yet to identify the underlying principle of this empathic effect. And there are other mysteries besides. Although the flower is extraordinarily long-lived, its low reproductive rate has made it difficult to find younger populations growing in the wild. With too few sightings to map its distribution, and no closely related species to track, we've been unable to pinpoint its land of origin. Hmm. To further complicate matters, every culture, even dimly aware of its existence, has given it a different name and mythos. Our attempts to study it via the historical record have been an exercise in frustration. As an avid botanist myself, I should one day like to unravel the heart bloom secrets. But I'm afraid other duties must take precedence. I will leave you to your thoughts. Hmm. Okay, nice chat. I liked hearing about the heart bloom, that's so nice. Cool. Bye. Cool, bye. I'm a botanist. I'm something of a botanist myself, you know? I wonder if I'll be able to gather it. Have you learned aught of interest? Um, I learned about some pretty flowers that um, change color, like on your mood. A flower that reacts to one's feelings? Strange. I must say, I have never heard of such a thing. This is all very fascinating, but as it stands, we fail to gain any significant insight into the forum's undertaking. Alice is like, what have you been doing? Like, this is not helpful. <laughs> Thanks. I know. Indeed. While there is certainly enough activity to support Erinville's supposition that her priority has been placed on improving food production. Oh. And fortunately for our investigation, these workers were never informed as to how their duties served the master plan. No, of course not. Of course not. <sighs> if only we could interrogate the forum members directly. Mm. Maybe we could bug, put a bugs, like, listen in on their meetings and stuff. Isn't that the entrance to the arcade? Um, I don't know. Hey, it's our friend. Look, there. I think that's Erinville. Erinville, oh yeah. Cute bun boy. A little difficult to tell from here, but, but I think you're right. He did say he was coming down to make his report. Erinville receives his orders from the forum. Would it not follow then that the superior to whom he reports is a forum member, or at least a close associate? Probably. You mean to eavesdrop on their conversation? That's what I said. What of the risks? Hey, great minds think alike. Ours alone to bear. We won't interfere with Erinville's work, nor will he be implicated as an accomplice. If you're not comfortable taking part, I can do this alone. <laughs> Nay, I said myself that I wished to know Father's intentions, and no answers will be forthcoming should we simply ask nicely. That's right. We can apologize later, should it come to it. Right now, we need every crumb of information we can get our hands on. Consequences be damned. Hell yeah. Alfie's coming around. That's good. It might be best if you came along as well. In fact, we should all... Look, I have really big ears. I will be able to hear the best. Like, if you need someone to eavesdrop, I'm, I'm your butt. 
<laughs> uh oh. Cry. Will the flowers tell us if you're okay? Cry. Hmm. Oh, yes. That certainly sounds like a plan. I'm glad you agree. Bunny. Quickly, Erinville is on the move. We need to get closer before we lose him. Okay. Now we gotta, we gotta hurry because he's quick. Almost. I can almost reach you. What are you talking about, Kryl? What are you up to? What are you, what is going on? Kryl, Kryl. Forgive me, my attention has been elsewhere. Oh my gosh, just not even paying attention. Let's get out of him already. We waited too long. It feels wrong to spy on Aaronville. He's gonna know. Okay. He's gonna know. He's he's a hunter and a bun, so he's gonna be aware. We're not gonna be able to hide it that we're spying, but he's gonna be cool with it because he's really chill. <laughs> Is Kyle still feeling unwell? Yes, clearly. Keep an eye on her, but keep moving too. We cannot let our quarry slip away. Ironville was headed westwards along the path. Outside the Arcane. Come, we can still catch him. Let's hurry. Okay. I'll see what... We've fallen too far behind. I can still hear it. What? Carl's losing her mind. Hold a moment. I have an idea. If memory serves, that colossal wall-like structure is Logisticon Beta, one of Labyrinthos' climate control centers. It should have its own lifts, which one, with which one could access the upper or lower tiers. I, if I were an agent of the forum, it would make for a convenient meeting place. But even if we happen to find Aaronville in the company of said agent, we cannot expect them to reveal issues of importance as we nonchalantly stroll past. Nay, we shall have to remain undetected. If only Graha and the Vanish spell were here. That's why. Oh, but there are other ways of turning invisible. Hippity hop, my little what? What? No! What is this? <gasps> I got frogged. Oh my goodness! She. What? Hey, this isn't so bad. Hell yeah! Actually, this is good. Don't don't turn me back. <laughs> I suggest you and your green companions hop along and catch up with Aaronville. Should you feel the magic's fading, return to me, and I'll refresh the enchantment. What am I to do? Wait here with me. In your current state of mind, you'd be as likely to leap into the jaws of a predator. <laughs> Thanks. Which reminds me. Wear the creature's hereabouts. In that form, you're essentially defenseless. <laughs> I love the way the, head, the frogs are bobbing their heads at the music. It's great. It's really good. You have changed into a toad. I've been hexed. You will return from your transfigured status if you move too far away. Got it. Uh, ribbit, Alfie Toad. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Alfie Toad. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was all it was all a setup for Alfie Toad, man. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, I'll stick with Alfie Toad. Yeah. It was such a good such a good payoff. What a fun quest. This is, this is great. Ba, ba, ba. It's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. And I think it could be nicer to be red or yellow. Discuss your surroundings. Ribbit. <laughs> Ali Toad turns to face the north. Perhaps she's suggesting you cross the bridge. Uh. Kairusan. <laughs> Kairusan. What up to Rune? Kairusan. Okote Rune. <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> Frog gang. I trust you will find your compensation to be more than satisfactory. We wish to make clear that we are pleased with the efficiency and thoroughness of your work. So much so that we have come bearing new tasks in need of your competent hand. Another lengthy list. If I may speak frankly. The cleaners have been pushed to the point of collapse by your unending demands. Whoa! Aaron Bill, hell yeah. <clears throat> Man, I know I knew he was the real one. We are not familiars to be exploited. We are Charlene scholars and we deserve an explanation for this unseemly treatment. What warrants such urgency? Love the sky. What a hero. Now you tell him to his face, Aaronville. In an age long past, Charlian was charged with a momentous duty. And now that word of the final days hangs heavy in the air, the time has come for us to fulfill that charge. Um. I can say no more, but I promise you this. All will be revealed in due course. And when it has, you will understand that your toil was in service to the greatest good. Yeah, it's it's for the elite's doomsday bunker and the moon. Then I will do your bidding. For now. But unless you wish the cleaners to rise up in protest, I advise you to offer tangible improvements for our working conditions. Your promised revelation does nothing to address present circumstances. Yeah. A fair point. Your concerns will be conveyed to the forum. Oh, I knew, oh, I knew that he'd, tell, he'd be able to tell. Can smell it. You can smell it. I hope that was informative. <gasps> you may consider my. What did I tell you? In full. What did I tell you? What did I tell you about this guy? I said. I said. He's gonna know. He's a bun boy and he's a hunter. He is gonna know. 
While I do have my reservations about the Forum, I want to believe that they have our best interests at heart. You want to believe. Which is why I'm reassured that you're busy sniffing out the truth of things. We can ill afford to place all our eggs in one basket, this master plan of theirs, without first understanding the risks involved. Wow, what a great character. Wait! How did you know it was us? <laughs> if you mean to impersonate a toad, try studying the real thing. And don't try to fool an expert. <laughs> oh my god. Aaron will... Aaron will... Uh... <laughs> Aaron will... <laughs> I suppose we should have known a gleaner who specializes in animal procurement would not be so easily deceived, yet he seemed inclined to put his trust in us all the same. More importantly, perhaps we discovered a new piece of the puzzle, this momentous duty the forum agent mentioned. Charlene has been called to action that Telofroy's declaration was the catalyst. Whatever charge it is they hope to fulfill, they deem it of sufficient import to disrupt all of Labyrinthos, not to mention ignore Eorzea's request for aid. Can Aaronville um, be like join our group? Can he be like a new scion and stuff? What duty could warrant the direct involvement of the forum and the commitment of all its resources? Um, saving, like basically creating an, an arc. Like, an, it's like, you know how Charlian was created after there was an arc? made by that guy uh well they want to do the same again except um to the moon because it's the end of all so they see it as like oh this is our legacy this is our this is part of our identity and it's okay that we're that we're like letting everything burn because this is our job we have this one job but i don't know i don't know if the elite are gonna let anybody else i'm assuming a lot okay my guardian assumed a lot I'm still like, I'm on board with my moon and doomsday bunker theory. But how many of the common folk do they plan to save? That's the question. Um, welcome back. I did find Aaronville. Yeah. I did. It's pretty good. Interesting. I had a feeling you would learn something important, even if that something was simply a confirmation that no one knows much of anything. We should share this with Kryl, then discuss how we'd like to proceed. Assuming we find her back at the farm, she was behaving oddly, so I, be I bade her return and rest there. Perhaps not the best decision in hindsight. Would you mind checking near those hours she was so entranced by? Okay, now I'm gonna find out what is wrong with Kryl. <laughs> Are you supposed to be taking that? You killed it. For you, the spell will keep it from wilting. Oh, okay, thanks. She said you would need it for the journey ahead. <clears throat> will um. you speak with her now? I cannot hope to match Minfilia's clarity, of course, but... What? Have you been... You're trying to channel? Yeah, she is. Okay, if you want. If you want, sure. Thank you. Wow. Do not worry. She has lent me her body for only a moment. Okay, I'm listening. Just as I could not save the first from the flood of light, 
It has become arduous for me to interact with the physical world without assistance. Though I might converse with you for a time, the incorporeal form I assumed on the ship would be incapable of casting even the simplest enchantment. Hmm. It is in the depths of the ethereal sea, the place to which all life returns, where my influence is greatest. After Menphilia's sacrifice on the first, it was to the sea, here in the source, where I ferried her soul. I wished that gentle spirit to find rest in the world she loved so well. Another. Take the flower. Walk free. For you are free. To go where you wish. To believe what you will. Am I? That bloom will be your guide. Test and proof of your conviction. In darkness, Seek joy, surrender not to sadness, and see beyond despair. Walk free, and bear the light for others to follow. Together, raise it aloft and let it shine, till the end, blinding and radiant. <laughs> Just squish it in my back pocket. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> that was all too brief. Already she seems so far away. So this was specifically to give me this flower? And some words of encouragement and let me know I'm free. But my apologies if I this other you. soul ever since we began our descent into labyrinthos I have sensed another's will strong <clears throat> to reach out you know even with my particular talents it. though I was unable to make a connection at first so weak and tenuous it was once I took hold of that wispy thread imagine my surprise to discover it was Heidelin herself Needless to say, it seemed wise to learn what we could before letting go. Her answers were more cryptic than I would have liked, but at least she left us with a guide of sorts, that unusual flower. Yeah, what will it do though? <laughs> yes, we are definitely making progress. <laughs> That's a copium. <laughs> okay, yes. We are making progress. You can't be serious. We've done nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, no. he's pissed that we are here poking around exactly what he didn't want. Mr. Fortuno, what business has the forum with us? Obstruction and suppression, apparently. Mistress Baldessian. Our records show you facilitated the Scion's entrance into Charlian by claiming them as assistants for your organization. Um, we are assisting. I mean, assistance can mean a lot of things. We are aware of your investigations. After alerting the major institutions to the presence of potential troublemakers, we received word from an Archean custodian. <clears throat> oh, right. 
Oh, that dude on the inside. Yeah, the guy who wouldn't let us use the elevator. He was like students of Baldessian. A group operating under the auspices of the students, skulking about Labyrinthos and engaging in clandestine behavior. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right, you're right. We have been acting pretty sus. It's true, it's true. Clandestine? We may not have entered Charlie in a science, but we did naught to conceal our identities. Oh, really? Alpha Toad? Is that right, Alpha Toad? We didn't do anything to conceal our identities. Alpha Toad? Okay, okay, okay. Our only purpose in this city is to seek the truth. <laughs> I can think of no reason why our actions should warrant the forum's intervention. <laughs> It is not our way to discourage the pursuit of knowledge, but the timing of such pursuits must be considered, not to mention their potential impact. With the world in chaos, we, the true caretakers of wisdom, have committed ourselves to an undertaking that demands the utmost discretion. We know. We know what you're doing. And we will not risk its success by turning a blind eye to disruptive foreign elements in our midst. There's only two courses of action. Like, either you have to play dumb here or you have to, like, bluff. Probably playing dumb is better. What, then, is to be our fate? Will you put us on a ship back to Eorzea? The forum will convene to examine your case. The results of said inquiry will determine your future in this city. Man, this city is on lockdown right now because of this really sketchy stuff they're doing. As for your absent companion, he has already been detained. Graha? Detained? Graha! But why? Is reading a crime now, too? Reading is encouraged. Celebrated, even. Not, however, of the volumes shelved in the restricted section of the library. Doesn't he have access? He's the Archon. Refusing to comply will only make matters worse. Okay. Let us instead treat this as an opportunity to open a dialogue with the Forum. Okay, I, I trust you on this, Ishtala. You're gonna know what to do here. I don't... I'm way out of my league. Silence is often one's best defense. I would advise against prolonging the proceedings with frivolous discourse. Okay. But enough. This is not the place for debate. The Rostra await. Oh boy. It was only a matter of time before this happened because we cannot stop poking around. Okay. Oh no, Raha's already here. But this is his home, like. Forgive me, I was careless. Oh, he blames himself! No! No, Grace! No, don't! We would have been detained regardless. This way, at least, we managed to stay together. I trust your time within the Forbidden Archives was well spent. <laughs> don't underestimate this one, man. I've seen what he's order. capable of. This inquiry is now in session. As Speaker-elect, I will be presiding over the day's proceedings. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Master Forchner, would you be so kind as to restate the matter which compelled you to summon your colleagues with such urgency? As you are all aware, we recently denied Eorzea's request for Charlian assistance. Since then, certain individuals dissatisfied with our decision have taken it upon themselves to interfere with our work. They entered our nation masquerading as associates of the students of Baldessian, but these malcontents are better known as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. <gasps> Kryle's hair is up. Kryle's hood is off. Wow. Okay. These militants wield influence with both the Eorzean and Eastern alliances and are inextricably involved with the crises presently afflicting the world at large. I mean... He's not wrong. That's true. That part's true. Loose in our city. These warmongers sought to meddle with and expose matters of state secret. What are they if not a dire threat to be expelled? Um... You have tarnished the good name of the students. Galuf would be ashamed. This is rough for her. Galuf Baldessian was never one to forsake his fellow man. Even if this nation closed every door and retreated from the world, he would have found a way to help the Scions, help every soul of this star fight back against the coming doom. She looked down like I know, like she knows that Carl's right. A terrible enemy stands poised to lay waste to all we hold dear. In the face of such madness, Eorzea reached out to Charlian, a respected ally, in the hopes of forming a united front. Was your curt dismissal truly the best you could offer? Or are you so preoccupied with your momentous duty of an age long past that even the end of the world is unworthy of your attention? <clears throat> <clears throat> but they don't Whence think this revelation. Yeah, that's the question. They don't think it's really the final days. From the mouth of a forum member within fortuitous earshot. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but we... it seems your findings support my own. We heard that they know they do think it really is the final days, and that's why they're Carrying out this duty. Whatever it is. Doomsday Bunker. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the forum's policy making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. Okay, that's really smart. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent. The unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time, I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something... odd. Yeah, he had to deal with you more. It's a crystal eggs arc, so... You know. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge. Um, 
Excuse me, what? The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravanian colony. The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Now, there is no question <laughs> that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. Oh. Okay, I see what you're saying. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. The very same period when Charlian scholars in the hinterlands began a formal study of the ethereal sea. She would know all about that because of her time with Matoya. You found something, did you not? And whatever it was, gave rise to your oh-so-important duty. They discovered the true nature of Hydaelyn. Mind your tongue, Acha. If you had seen... Uh, is he getting force choked right now? Yes. We are bound by a duty we cannot ignore. He's getting force choked. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's a Sith, man. Knowing this, what would you have us do? Abandon our vital work and join you on the field of battle? Uh... Well, maybe not on the field, but you could do something. We will never choose the way of the sword. We will fulfill our mission, not through strife and bloodshed, but survival. Well... What about the survival of your own children? Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do what you Do must. Do as you must, then. Yeah. But we scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Such misguided zeal. Father, I... Master Fortuno, I fail to understand the stance you have elected to take. But by the same token, I have yet to find a compelling argument to counter the challenge you put to us in Gradania. Still, in the midst of my uncertainty, I must trust in myself to do what is right, as others have chosen to trust in me. In Gridania, his dad asked them what could possibly justify the sacrifices you make in war. And it's a difficult question to answer. And... So I will continue, as I always have, weighing the consequences of my every action and allowing my hope for the future to inform my decisions.
And he doesn't have That's hope. quite enough. Have you all forgotten the reason for this assembly? I mean, yeah, we are way off track. Like this is this has become a conversation. Scolok Montesheim. He's the head of the studium and an old friend of my grandfather's. Honestly, every discussion devolves into some interminable debate. <laughs> Terrible habit. Let's return to the topic at hand, hmm? So he's good? By their own admission, these scions have resolved to fight alongside the Eorzean nations against the doom which Swift approaches. Now we are we are all accepting that the doom is it's really it's really really real. But there exists no evidence of an attempt to incite our citizens to do the same. Well, because it's Charlene. Furthermore, while our decision may well have been the correct one, we cannot simply bull our <laughs> way through these disagreements without inviting doubts or objections. Put yourselves in their place. Who among you would leave a tome unopened if an elder forbid you read it with no reason given? Hmm. No. If we're to quell further discontent, then we must conclude this matter with a fair and even hand. His beard makes him wise. He has the biggest beard I've seen. Here. It's made him very order. wise. We will have order! Master Montachain raises some valid points. Keeping such concerns in mind, I propose we enforce the following measures. Until further notice, the students of Baldessian are to cease any and all activities within the domain of Charlien. You will also refrain from any further investigation into the Forum's decisions and duties. Failure to comply with these restrictions will result in the immediate expulsion of your Scion Associates. Um, there's no way they're not, look, there's no way we are gonna be able to not Let us put this judgment to a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. We gotta investigate. Literally, not everyone raising their hand? Um, was it like half the people or is it? I count 51 for and 48 against. Ugh. The proposal is passed. Crap. Students, Scions, you have heard the forum's judgment. Pray abide by it. Or face the consequences. Honored members, I thank you for your time. This inquiry is concluded. That's really frustrating. Because it felt like we were so close to a breakthrough and then they just 